I gotta click the button. <laughs> so what's going on? Ah, uh, so um, Road to Joe Fest, third episode of Road to Joe Fest. We had Ed Schumacher, we had Bobby Valla, and tonight I have another super awesome guest. Um, this guy's a fellow combat vet like myself. Uh, he runs a channel that I've been watching for many years. Very informative. Gave me a lot of knowledge on action force, action man, things like that. He's a great historian of all the Palatoy lines, and I think he's a truly awesome dude. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in uh, from Analog Toys, Mr. Tony Roberts himself. Thank you for that uh, awesome intro, man. How you doing? I, I'm excellent. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very well. I'm very well. It's good. Uh, yeah, the the wife's at, the wife's at work. My son went to a party last night. He had too much to drink and stayed the night. So I've got a <laughs> house to myself. Cool. I got ah awesome. bacon, eggs, coffee. It's like yeah, and then sit down have a have an articulated chat. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, real quick, right off the bat, I have to go ahead and throw this up. And this is from uh, my partner in crime, my co-host, my Chewbacca for Neon at Night for our all '90s stream. And this is from Nick. Said he wants to start the party with a bang. Two of my favorite content creators in one spot. Viva Le Desert Rap. Very cool. Thank you, Nick. Much appreciated. Yeah, so we got a lot of people here. We got uh, Jim Largo, Jeff Morris, Samuel Edwards. Uh, obviously, Nick's here. Uh, Matthew Matson's here. Uh, Willem Toy and Hobbies here. Uh, the Mams here. So my wife's in the house. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Do I have to watch what I say? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. You're totally good. Uh, she's in the infantry as well. She's in the U.S. Yeah. Army infantry, so she she knows what's up. And then. Uh, Got another super chat from uh, Zazel from Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse himself. So that's pretty cool. How you doing, he'll be Zazel? A Joe Fist. Yeah, he'll be at Joe Fist this year. Ratface44. Uh, look who else is here. Uh, George Aiken. And for everybody hanging out with us tonight, um, Tony and I are going to open this little uh, gift box from George Aiken. So we're going to bust that soaker open. That'll be pretty cool. Uh, I'm here. And I keep the viewers yeah. watching for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna savor that. Yeah. So we got. We're, let's just keep teasing it every ten minutes. Like, what's, what's yeah. George said this time? <laughs> Stick around. Look, and then Zazel <laughs> sent another one. I don't know if you meant to, but wow, cool, very cool. Oh, one here. for you, one for me. <laughs> yeah, probably. Anthony Romo's here. Pendragon's here. Very cool. We got a lot of people here already. So you, uh, you've been busy. How are things going? uh cra crazy busy like i'm not going to bore the chat with my day job um but things have been crazy busy in, in in the day job um i've got a job that i'm really enjoying at the moment uh, i've been doing it been over uh, 18 months now but yeah crazy busy there i've got a trip to thailand coming up in less than two weeks um first time cool. we've gone back as a whole family since pre-covid so like yeah I i'm going to thailand for like 12 days I come back, I've got a four weeks of intense work, and then it's the road to Joe Fest. So, uh, yeah, crazy yeah. busy at the moment. And, and yeah. trying yeah. to crank out the content whenever I can as well. So, Yeah, you were telling me about uh, some new content that you were uh, about to push out. Yeah, I'm, I'm launching a, a brand new series of shorter form videos. They're like anywhere between like four and seven minutes uh, called From the Collection, where I've got a lot of toys in the collection where, where it's like a one-off item. And uh, I've all, I've often wanted to talk about those toys and I've never really kind of found the right format to do that. Um, and I decided just to make some shorter form videos called from the collection where I just focus in on a toy or a small group of toys from the collection that have not really, you know, found their way into a, a larger format video, the kind of videos that I, I do on the channel. So uh I did like a trial run on Friday. I made one of these videos. I put it on Patreon. The patrons responded really well. So I made two more videos. Um, so for the first time ever on this channel, I'm going to dump three videos all in one go. So for you're on the East Coast of the States, yeah? No, I'm in Mountain Standard Time. Oh, okay. You are. Uh, well, but, well, for you guys in the States, um, these three videos – will be available for you to watch during breakfast tomorrow, I would say, depending awesome. on where you are around that time, depending on what time you get up as well, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tend to sleep in on the weekends. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jim Largo sends a super chat. Uh, great to see you all. Thank you, Jim. Really appreciate Thanks, that. Thanks, Jim. And uh, Tony, um, 
you probably get a kick out of this, but uh, Ryan says my shirt sucks and gave me a partial <laughs> refund. So, <laughs> wow, thanks, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate <laughs> it. it. You know, it, at least his super chats are witty. Mine are just like what, what I usually put just because, because I can. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what to put. I just, I just put stuff. So, very cool. Yeah, you got a lot of stuff going on, and um. I was going to broach this at some point, but I, I like more organic conversations than just going off my notes. That yeah. video that you just posted about, uh, what was it, Mattel and the content creator oh, yeah, yeah. buying yeah. people, that was that, a that, great that, video. It upset a lot of people, but why? It only, it only, well, it seemed to upset some other YouTube content creators, but. Those ones, whatever. <laughs> Those ones, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because in the in the video you talk about like, well, if you want to see like who's taking advantage of that, just go look and see who put the videos up. And there you go. Yeah, but the the, the thing the, there's there's nothing really wrong with that. No, but I don't think that there's anything really wrong with also sh showing the the audience the, the the inner workings like hey this this is the kind of language they use in these emails this is what's in the in the contract like I, that's all it was i wasn't i wasn't throwing shade at any other part maybe mattel a little bit but yeah no no yeah and i i thought you were you were pretty even about it you just said like if that's something you want to do that's fine but yeah but i still yeah. like the video and um i don't know this is five dollars <laughs> pen pen dragon is the guy who designs all my logos so that's pretty cool Very yeah cool. yeah and then uh you know anthony romo says tony talks a lot of shit i'm all for it i don't know i don't really know if it's shit talking but uh yeah i uh, I, I appreciated it um I'm, I'm unapologetically opinionated uh what, what I, can you do I will say when Hasbro sent you that box and you made that spoof video about it, I probably watched that thing 15 times in a row. <laughs> that video you know, is freaking hilarious. I, I got approached by them um, in a very similar way to, to Mattel. There was, I didn't have to sign any contract um, mm -hmm. in, in this instance because I, I, I think with Hasbro, that, that's the only time I've ever been approached by Hasbro. I think Hasbro is very different where you don't kind of get approached by Hasbro overall, it's one of the teams. So like Marvel, the Marvel Legends team will do it a little bit different to the way the G.I. Joe team and the Power Rangers team and all that stuff. Right, right. Um, yeah, I got approached by them, I think, just before I was leaving for Joe Fest. And I shared the email with like Michael, Bobby and, and Ryan. I was like, these idiots really think I want to do this. And I can't remember which one of them, but one of them said, you, you should do it and then make a spoof video. I was like, that's <laughs> not a bad idea. Um, so I just responded and I just literally gave them my my post, my PO box address and went, oh, see what happens. And yeah, I got back from Joe Fest and had this massive box waiting for me. I was like, I'm going to enjoy this. So It was hilarious. Uh, thank you, Samuel. Uh, Samuel sends a $5 super chat, says, Tony speaks the truth. Thank you, Sam. Much appreciated. Yeah, and then Jeff Morris says that spoof Hasbro video made me want to get that Storm Shadow figure so it still worked for Hasbro. Well, it, it, it did, Jeff, because that Storm Shadow figure, which I have right yeah. here, yep. is from... I, now, I, I don't collect all classifieds. In fact, I don't think I've bought a classified figure since I got that box, but that's the best one. Uh, the best one that I've ever had in, in my hand. I, I love that Storm Shadow figure. Spirit was really good. I like the Crocodile from Crocmaster, but that Storm Shadow was just not not a hundred percent perfect. No, they they made the retro card perfect. Mm -hmm. So you get but that they put one. Put that one out first. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can't complain. I got it for free. What, what can I do? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I do have that one in a box. I I will admit I do I do have that Storm Shadow in a box in my game room. So. I don't, yeah. I don't have many classified figures, but the, the couple that I do have, you know, I, I have them for certain sentimental reasons, et cetera. But yeah, I uh, definitely have more of a certain other six inch line that I do have classified, but you know, oh. whatever. 
Yeah, what Marvel Legends is it? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, no, it's, it's some other line. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll probably talk about it. But uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's let's talk about this real quick. So you're coming this year? Yep, I am. Yep, my yeah. uh, when I went last year, um, well, you know, we we were still coming out of COVID. Australia's borders opened a lot later than a number of other yeah. countries, and it was. Yeah. So it was really kind of left to the last minute. And then, you know, I was sort of struggling to get the, the funds together. Uh, but this year I bought my, my airfares in November. <laughs> like, Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. And then uh, Pendragon says 46 watching 30 likes that math is broken, but uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that Chad. It's, it's Chad's looking out for Chad's. Uh, Johnny from Simple Tricks and Nonsense says Tony's videos on the history of Action Force and specifically the interview with one of the creators was terrific. Great behind the scenes info. Uh, talking about George Aiken or um, no, Bob Breakin. Bob Breakin, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, your I've, stuff I've done with Bob Breakin is amazing. I've, I've done interviews with it with a, a lot more people than, than just Bob, um, but Bob was around well, when it comes to Action Man, Action Man ran for 18 years. He was on the line for 17 of those 18. He, he joined as a, as a young toy designer. I mean, the first year of Action Man, it was just rebranded Hasbro G.I. Joe, the original 12-inch stuff. Yeah. Um, then he came in into its second year, and he started he started doing a lot of the explorers, the, the mountaineer, and, and so, so he designed a lot of the mountaineering equipment for the early 60s Action Man mountaineer, accessories that then got, shipped back to the United States and ended up in the G.I. Joe adventure team line. So there there's go. a lot of stuff that Bob Breakin designed that is actually um, in the, yeah, the G.I. Joe adventure team line and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, well, one wonderful guy, Bob, he's actually working on a book on the history of Palatoy, which I'm hoping to share a video about that uh, sometime soon. Once um, uh, they're getting together, like a, a, a promo pack for me and, um, yeah, very, very excited. It's I think it's gonna be a Kickstarter. I'm hundred percent gonna be back in that. It's gonna be a, a full um yeah, Bob's written this kind of full history of the Palatoy company. So excited for oh, that. I'll, I'll be looking forward to that for sure. And then um Michael Demers, I hope I pronounced that properly, says hi Tony. I met Bobby at Northeast Comic Con and would love to meet you. Are you coming to the Northeast United States anytime soon? Well, I, I will be in Rhode Island for a week prior to Joe Fest, but I won't be doing any shows or anything like that. I've got 1,500 carded desert rats to sign. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I just I just want to ha hang out with Bob. And like when I was there last year, I, I'm doing the trip a little bit differently this time where I'm in, I'm in the States for about two and a half weeks and Joe Fest is like right at the end of my trip. Last time, Joe Fest was at the start of the trip, and then right. I went and kind of hung out with Bobby afterwards. Um, so I'm doing it the other way around this time. Uh, but I just remember when, when you know, the, the time that I did spend in, in Rhode Island, um, Bobby kept asking me if I wanted to go out and do things. And all I wanted to do was just hang out at Valiverse and see the day-to-day -day workings. I spent yeah. three days just packing orders for him because that's what I wanted to do. Um, so it was, it, was, it was pretty cool because I came across one – packing order it was for a single desert rat figure and i looked at it and it was my friend in australia so i was like i'm signing this big <laughs> signed That's it cool. and, I, and then took a photo and packed and then and then sent him the photo and i was like hey man i was actually i actually packed your order while i was in the states that was pretty cool yeah see that that stuff's super cool that that's really cool and then um uh, tjc is just popping in to say hi because he's playing jeopardy over on uh, zazel's channel so thanks for stopping by buddy very cool thank you uh and then uh, Jim Largo, the Stan Solo Desert Rat is going to be awesome. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Yep, we definitely will. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're doing this. We're doing this this year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pe people keep asking why, because it, it, it all started as a joke. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think it was on the, the Friday night. Um, the Valiverse booth ended up being way bigger than a uh, uh, busier sorry not bigger ended up being way busier than any of us expected ridiculous um, you know I, I knew it was going to be buzzing but not insane like a line all the way back blocking the convention center door kind of thing yeah. um and yeah i i 
just said in in passing to to Bobby and Ryan, I was like, man, Valicon's awesome, and and it just stuck. And yeah, people have said, why isn't it called Valafest? Like, well, first of all, I think Valicon sounds better, and I didn't yep. want it to sound like Sausage Fest, so. <laughs> Even though it was, you know, it totally was. It totally was behind that counter. I mean, we're just calling it. Man, it is a big talking dress, but you know, you don't want to yeah. advertise that. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. You know, I mean, that's that's what we're all there for. Sausage fest. And uh, yeah, Patrick, we're going to talk about Matt Damon. Maybe uh, Johnny says, as a kid, I always wanted to go to Pawtucket and visit where GI Joe was made. Yeah, I did too. Not anymore. Um, I'll tell you, you know, like your history with Bob Breakin is, it, it's not really the same, but when I sat down with um, Kirk Bazigian, that guy could just talk. He could just talk GI Joe forever, forever and yeah. ever and ever. And he still remembers everything like it was yesterday. So that's, that's always really cool to sit down and talk to those people. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Kirk, I, I, I haven't had much to do with, with um, Kirk, but um, he's a good guy. He's a good yeah. guy. He's, I've been friends with him on Facebook for a long time. And yeah. Yeah. He's super supportive too. And uh, Kevin said, wait till this year. I bet the line will be insane. It's um, we're going to get into that in a second because Ed actually redesigned the layout and the flow of a Joe fest because of the Valiverse booth. Yeah. I don't know if you, if you caught that, but yeah so anyway so there, there's our fun little joke and you know ed appreciated it and everybody thinks it's funny and the people who don't um lighten up because it's just toys. <laughs> just gotta just gotta freaking lighten up a little bit so how long have you been doing analog toys about seven years it'll be seven years in july yeah if, if you if you go to the the about tab on the on the channel it actually says the channel's been around since 2011 but all it was when I made the story of Action Man documentary, like I, I took like nine, 10 months off work to make this feature length documentary that I sold on DVD. I started a YouTube channel. The only video I put out was the trailer, like promoting this DVD of, of the documentary that, that I had made. So um, because of that, I, I always forget when the anniversary of Analog Toys is. It's normally Tim Ward who reminds me, but it's, yeah. I, I don't even remember the day. I think it's the 16th of July. Um, so yeah, all, almost seven years I've been doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and and your channel's doing great. So I, yeah. I can't say enough awesome stuff about it. And uh, I got a message for you here. Okay, Michael Demers. Uh, much appreciated, Michael. Much appreciated. Yep, we're going to talk about that too. So. And three um, POA. Yeah. How did that come about? Now that started on your channel, correct? Yes, it did. Yep. Yep. Um, Bobby Bobby had left the Infinity Equation um, just ju just due to the, the 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 commitment. It was every Friday. Um, he 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 was really busy with the line. He needed to take a break. So I think I think he'd been gone from Infinity Equation for a, for a, a couple of months. Um, and I was talking to him. I was like, you know, are you going to go back to Infinity Equation? He said, look, Friday nights don't really work for me. I don't want to have to do it every, every week. And I'd been thinking about um, doing some kind of a, of, of a podcast. Um, to, it, it was really, it was a, a combination of kind of all three of us. Because I started speaking to Ryan about it. You know, if, if he was interested, I, I thought the dynamic of a vintage collector, a modern collector and a toy designer, plus yeah. also three guys who are really good friends, was going to be a really good dynamic. Um, it's not just like, you know, three Marvel Legends fans just talking about Marvel Legends every week. We can cover a lot of topic topics with the vintage knowledge, the modern knowledge, and then, you know, the, the toy design knowledge. Um, and even though it was starting on analog toys. It was always my intention for it to go and become its own channel. Cause I'd <laughs> technically not true. <laughs> actually, um, Ryan, actually, but, but, but right from the very beginning, I think the first kind of conversations I, I had with the guys about it, I was like, I want you to be the host Ryan. Cause a, I, I could see that he would be an awesome host. Um, and I was like, I want to be able to do a podcast every couple of weeks talking toys where I don't have to put any effort into it. I've just got to show up. 
someone else can do the thumbnails and the show notes and and all of that stuff. And very selfishly, I knew that one day when it uh, when it left the analog toys platform and became its own thing, there would be additional content that I could just enjoy, such as yep. loose but complete. You know, so that was very selfish of me. I, mean, I, uh, I, I kind of knew that was going to happen one day, and uh, yeah, I'm really glad it did. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> now they're all talking about rats bullshit. Yeah, I love Ryan. Ryan's an awesome guy, but he fucking annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, Ryan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then uh, Michael says my grandfather was a Pearl Harbor survivor, so I come from a family of military history. Very cool. That's really cool. My grandfather uh, was on landing craft at D-Day at Sword Beach, which I didn't learn until 15 years after he'd passed. Um, so, yeah, it, it's an interesting thing about that that kind of generation. My uncle, he was always a very quiet, kind of sullen, just very like straight faced guy, and he wasn't. He wasn't mean and he wasn't anything like that, but he always just scared me when I was a little kid. And then when he died, my mother said that my aunt wanted me to be one of his pallbearers and to wear my, my dress greens. And I was like, why? And she was like, oh, well, your uncle, he was in like uh, Korea and Vietnam and this and that. And he did all this stuff. And I never knew, like, I, I never yeah. knew anything about that. And I, I was kind of blown away. And yeah, his, his funeral was like a, big deal so that was actually pretty cool uh george aiken says my grand my grandfather was a desert rat no shit that's actually rad that's, that's really his rad. um um what's the word i'm looking for like it all it all comes back around you know <laughs> yeah it's all on the wheel and then yeah. uh laser pants uh so ryan says he feels loved which is cool very cool yeah, yeah, you'll you'll be feeling the love at Joe Fest, Ryan. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That it that that man is just so cuddly. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, Ryan's a cool guy. And then uh, Juan Toys and Bricks, but Tony, didn't you keep the F bomb figure from the Hasbro gift box? I kept all the figures from the Hasbro gift box. <laughs> oh, crazy. Yeah. George, uh, my great uncle died in Okinawa. He served as an RAF mechanic. It's crazy. And then, uh, yeah, you know, Ryan, veteran of the great 2015 <laughs> memoir. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to move on. So, um, Action Man. I know that you, yeah. you've had a lifelong love of Action Man since, since you were a kid, since you were a small boy. And you've, you've kind of told those stories uh, numerous times. So, like, what, what does Action Man and Action Force, like, mean to you? I know it's kind of broad. but So, I, I think I was about four or five years old when I held my first Action Man figure. Um, and it was... It, 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 I'm not exaggerating when I say holding this figure, that was a life-changing moment, and I was only four or five years old. My my dad explained, you know, what a soldier was, what the army was. It was the, the first figure I had, it was very similar to that 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 one you've got on the screen there, you know, just a standard British soldier with an SLR and a, and a beret. And um from that moment on, I just wanted to to be in, in the military and for, for someone growing, growing up in the UK, it's, it's very hard to explain to people um, who weren't there just how big and important action man was to 1970s Britain. It was such an iconic thing. It was obviously, you know, it, it, it's roots came from sixties Hasbro GI Joe, <clears throat> but by 1970, it'd be, become this quintessentially British toy line. Every kid, uh, I, I think I read a stat somewhere once that they said um, at, at the height of his fame in the 1970s, there were three action men in existence for every child in Britain. Like they made more 
than the population was actually producing children. Um, awesome. It was just such a, a, a huge thing that this, the scope of the line is incredibly immense. Like if, if, if people are just deciding now to become a vintage collector, don't pick Action Man because I've been collecting it for 30 years this year and I still don't have everything. Like, <laughs> you know, Star Wars, there's a finite number and there is a finite number of figures, but it's a huge number, all the different outfits and, and vehicles. And yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, because of the popularity of Star Wars, Action Man to remain competitive in the market was, although they, they continued to sell the larger scale Action Man through to 1984 in 1982 they brought him out in a, in a smaller scale um obviously the same scale as star wars five poa construction um because that you know Pal palatoy could see that that was now star wars had changed the play pattern of young children from larger figures to smaller figures that interacted with vehicles it was a lot about the vehicles yeah. and so you know star wars has got the space fantasy thing let's let's capture that military side of the market with um with action force and action force debuted at the london toy fair about 10 days before a real american hero debuted at the new york toy fair and neither company knew what the other one was doing so all these people who've said over the years that action force is a rip off and this that none of that's none of that's true Hasbro and Palatoy had a really solid relationship throughout the 60s and 70s because of licensing Action Man and a lot of stuff that was designed for the Action Man. I mean, the, the realistic hair and the Kung Fu grip hands, that all came from Palatoy and went backwards. Eagle Eyes yep. came from Hasbro and went to the UK. So there was this really collaborative relationship. But when G.I. Joe ended, which was, I think, around 76, 76, 77, um, there, there was not a lot of need for Hasbro and Palatoy to continue communicating because they'd kind of done away with that line. And then, yeah, they both kind of had the same idea. Um, actually, I think a real American hero was supposed to come out the year before and Hasbro decided to spend more time developing the concept and brand and they delayed yeah. it. So because empire, Isn't that right? Yeah, because yeah. when the yeah when the when the Empire Strikes Back toys hit, they were like, "Oh, we're going to take a year off," and that's when Larry Hama worked on all the file cards and everything like that. Yes, yeah. but yeah, 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 very cool. And then uh, Patrick says it's amazing how many young children were inspired inspired to join the military because of these toys. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, one one of the things that really appealed to me um, about Action Man is. There, there was no storyline with it. Action Man was... Uh, there. Were, there's some famous commercials where they say, Action Man, he's who you want him to be. Yeah. So every kid in my street, you know, we might have had three or four Action Man figures, but we all had our favourite. And, you know, I remember writing his own file card and he had a name and his own military specialties. And it was like you, you, you developed a relationship with him it was like the coolest imaginary friend a child could have was was, yeah. was your action man so that's awesome so you're doing that shit long before steel brigade oh yeah yeah and then uh i don't know if i showed this already but in, in case i didn't um I eric sends a five dollar super chat uh thank you very much it says my great grandfather was in the civil war grandfather in world war one father was in vietnam and my kid is a marine i was not allowed to serve well Sorry to hear that, but that's really awesome. So, Eric Alfred Abel, did I meet your daughter at Joe Fest last year? I think me and his daughter's a Marine. Uh, if that's who, if, if I'm thinking the right person, yeah. She, I remember she came you guys the, talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was really cool. She like her, her, her dad had, had sent her to the show to, to go and buy some stuff. So, um, hey, I, some stuff I wouldn't be surprised. Him, so. That's mm. cool. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll look to see if he does answer that. And then uh, Matthew Matson says, my uncle died in Korea. Uh, another was Navy and retired while working at the Pentagon. He was there at 9-11, the annex building, saw the plane fly over. Yeah, that's that's rough. That's rough. And then uh, World Made of Cardboard says, uh, oh, anyway, welcome. Thanks for coming. Says, uh, hello there. My grandfather served in the Pacific World War II. 
he was in the army island hopping uh manned heavy artillery yeah um uh, i was actually telling tony backstage that my infantry battalion can trace its roots all the way back to um battle of the philippines and it was my battalion's predecessor which was the 200th coastal artillery that was marched to the death camps in the baton death march and uh real quick chaz the guru's here so what's up dude and uh yeah now we're kind of caught up uh oh look at that <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i mean i don't know do you I, think I, do you think you're better than my second guest i don't know i don't know I, I did watch I did watch episode two of Road to Joe Fest and that guest sucked balls. Ooh. He didn't just suck; he sucked balls. <laughs> and then uh, that last super chat sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I hope these I guys just I keep. I don't keep know what the fuck you guys are doing. You're just raking in your super chat money. This is awesome. <laughs> I know, just raking it in. I don't know. And then uh, <laughs> James Salzberg, what's up? Says, I had a me G.I. Joe also, a foreign head talker. Cool. And then... Um, I don't I don't have a foreign head talk. I've got six foreign head Joes for, from the Soldier of the Century. It's when they did the Japanese Imperial Soldier, all of that. I've got, yeah. I've got all six of those, but I don't have a talking one with a... In fact, I don't even think I've got a talking G.I. Joe. I've definitely got talking action man figures, but... Uh, yeah. That's cool. And then uh Anthony Romo says, uh, thank us both for our service. So thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. That. Very, very yeah, you're welcome. My <laughs> wife and I went and saw uh we went and saw that new Shazam movie today and they they played like this, you know, commercial before the trailers, and it was like Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, you know, fire department, EMS, police, thank you for your service. And not too quietly, but not too loud. I was like, You're welcome. <laughs> just just having fun with it you know I, I i i really don't know how to to because um thank you for your service is, is a very american thing which yeah. which came around in like 2002 when you know after 9 11 and we the worldwide war on terror and all of that and it was yeah. very much a case of american society and this is a wonderful thing yeah. uh this is one of the things i i, I really love about America and American culture is how they wanted to right the wrongs of the way they treated the Vietnam veterans. Um, and that's where it all came about, but it's, it's not something that happens in Britain and Australia. I'm not saying that the populations of these countries don't appreciate the soldiers. They certainly do, but yeah, yeah. It, yeah. You don't walk up to people and thank you for your service. So it's always a little bit, um, um, Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward for me. I don't know. Don't know how to respond because, yeah, I, I, yeah, and, and I'm and I'm sure you're the same, Chad. I didn't do any of the stuff I did because I wanted people to thank me. That's what mm -mm. not what it was about. So no, no, and it, it it's just it's such a it's such an awkward, uncomfortable thing. And you know, because I I was in before nine eleven. It's like, oh, you know, thank you for your service. And I'm like, thanks. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know yeah. what to say. You never say you're welcome because that, that, like, well, that's a dick pull move. That, <laughs> like, pull that chat up that you just had there, the the AJZ toy. This one, the very bottom one. Yeah, that's that one. Happy to serve. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually gonna, really cool. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I hadn't sort of heard that response before. So, yeah, I, I just say thank you because. You know, you're absolutely right. You nailed it on the head. Whenever my wife and I see nom veterans out, we walk up to them. We go talk to them. Like we make it a point to go talk to nom vets because I'm the age, I'm older now than nom vets were when I was a kid, when, you know, when, when they were kind of treated like garbage and yeah. it's not fair. You know, they, they served so much longer and harder and went through worse conditions and yeah, it, it bothers me. It really does bother me. So when people thank me, I'm like, fucking thank me. Go thank that dude over there in his Vietnam. Yeah. You know, go thank that dude. Don't thank me. Yeah, you I guys mean, were spitting on that dude. You know? Yeah, that, that's the shit you're Chad, Chad, did you, you know, when Iraq, Afghan, wherever it was, you have air, con, air conditioning in your tents? They never had that shit in Vietnam, bro. <laughs> no, they 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 did not. Yeah. Um, you know, they, there were... Uh, it depends. So when we were in the rear, 
yeah, we had AC and yeah, we had yeah. all that stuff and we had chow halls and they had the, you know, the, the, um, like the shop at trailer truck and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, and then I would go back to Kuwait and there's all these Pogas Fobbits hanging out in Kuwait and they've got like a hard structure Applebee's and they're bitching. And I'm like, dude, I was shitting in an ammo crate like two days ago. Like, what are you complaining about? Anyway, that, that's a whole different, a whole different conversation. Anyway, do you, uh, and then do you, do you do you mind if I vape on screen? No, do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah, it's you we're, know, I'm, I'm we're all adults here. I'm having a relaxed chat with a friend. It's like you know, yeah. if I wasn't inside, I might smoke a cigar right now. So please, by all means. And then Eric says that was my kid. Eric, again, thank you for another super chat. You didn't have to. I was actually watching for your reply and says that was my kid. Uh, we will be going together this year. Looking forward to it, and I'm starting to get pumped. Very cool. Awesome. Looking forward to meeting yeah. you, Eric. Make sure you come That's and say cool. hello. Yeah. And then uh, Patrick says, I can't tell you how awkward when someone comes up out of nowhere. I appreciate it. But yeah, same thing. Um, yeah. I, I get real weird when people try to buy my meals. You know, and I'm like, Uncle Uncle Sam pays me. Like, I appreciate the gesture, but you know, I, don't, yep. I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. Uh, George Aiken says, during a COVID outbreak, I got thanked for my service. Yeah, George is. Um, he works for the uh, the National Health Service. Um, yeah, one of the best one of the best health services in 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 the world. So but let's let's not, that's going to take us down a political road. Let's stick to toys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna steer back toward toward toys. But you know, like you and I are both we're both military guys. Like I talk about it, you talk about it. Like it's it's not stuff that we hide. Um, I don't put my last name on my channel because I am still currently serving in uniform, even though I, I grew this goatee on, on leave, but yeah, that's, that's kind of why I don't, I don't have my last name on my stuff. Cause I, it's, I, 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 separate. I didn't initially, I didn't talk about it for the first two years, I think on, on the channel. And then um, it actually, people had started asking the question. They were picking up in some of my videos, just, you know, the, the some of the language and the, and the words that I was using or the way I would describe things, people would start sending me private messages like, Hey, did you, did you serve? Did you serve? And then uh, I can't remember where it was. I was, I was being interviewed on, on a channel somewhere and they started talking to me. And this one day I was just like, Oh, I'm just going to come out with, but then even when I sort of first come out about, I didn't mention special forces for a long time either. It was, it was like a gradual reveal over the first probably three or four years I was on the channel. So. Yeah. And then uh Kilimagua says, Where is Candy Crush and the toy goo goo? <laughs> They're the real authority on toys. Appreciate you guys keeping it real. Thank you very much. <laughs> toy goo goo. <laughs> toy goo goo. Yeah, that dude. I don't know. Uh, and then Jeff Reed's here and says, uh, evening everyone. Love nom vets. I know a few in my town. I snap a salute. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, awesome. Um Anthony Romo says, I work in EMS uh, on a 911 ambulance, and I say, you're welcome, LOL. <laughs> Don't know what else to say. It's kind of awkward. Yeah, I worked EMS for a while, too, man, and it's, uh, it's crazy. That's a crazy gig. So very yeah. cool. And, you know, going back to these images here on the screen, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with the chat, which is awesome. And, I, you know, Tony and I appreciate everybody and your, um, what you guys are saying, but I chose these two images specifically. I wanted that action man soldier. And when I grabbed an action force figure, I didn't want it to be like Mouton or, you know, Skip or yeah. something like, like I wanted it to be like an action force before we kind of get into the teams and the Z force and all that stuff, just because. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is history a, of it. It's a, it's a first series figure. The, the, the first wave in 1982 yeah. were literally just shrunk down action man figures. They took 12 of the most popular action man outfits and, and shrunk them down to that scale. So, yep, yeah. And I just I went to Blood for the Baron, and I went to the very first year, and I was like, "Yep, that's what I'm going to get." Yep. And then uh, because we have to tease it, we do. There we it do. Is. Yeah, we got to tease it. There it is. Thank you for that. Um, thanks. Pleasure to serve. Happy to serve. Happy to serve. Happy to there serve. it is. <laughs> I remember that. I don't know. You know, when people say that to me, uh, sometimes I jokingly just say, yeah, I just do it for the violence in the retirement. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
let's <laughs> blow shit up, sleep outside. I'm I'm here for the violence, you know, which uh Yeah, you know, no, I, I I I always wanted to have bad knees and a bad back before I turned 40. So oh you oh, we were kind of talking about backstage about how I'm on my way yeah. out. I had my I had my I know this is not toy talk, but I had my very first MRI. I'm almost 49 years old. Never had an MRI in my life. I went and got an MRI done. My uh, my PCM over there, uh, you know, Tricare. He was like, "Yeah, we need to do an MRI on your back." And uh, and he was like, "Yeah, you're you're done. You're you're done." He's like, he's like, "Look at this. I don't even know how you're upright." And I was like, "Cool, thanks, appreciate that." So, <laughs> Action Man and Action Force, and uh, I I kind of just hurried into this slide. Th that was a huge reason of why you chose to serve, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. the, it was it was the very first reason. Um, then then from there, like growing up in the eighties, um, heavily influenced by cinema, um, everything from you know cheesy canon action films like you know Delta Force and that kind of thing. Massive yeah. fan of Rambo. Yeah. Um, I, I was I was still. I want to say I was still only about eight or nine years old when I saw First Blood for the first time, and that was it for me. It was, which, which is weird. Like, you watch First Blood, you know, and it was like, that, that's where I first started, you know, hearing about special forces and things like that. And I, I idolized that character, and it's like I, I wanted to, you know, be this, grow up to be this fighting machine. But I was still very aware at that age that this – was a very broken individual with some serious yeah. mental health problems. Yeah. Why does someone want to grow up to be like that? <laughs> you know, I, I have my challenges with mental health. I talk about quite a lot on, on Patreon, but I, I'm certainly not like a John Rambo. That's definitely not, I'm not that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I put a certain picture in these slides in, in case, but you know, we can, we can drive past it if we want, or we can pause on it. No, no, no. If, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm open to talk about whatever, man. And, uh, Pendragon says I should change the name of my channel to a uh, violence and retirement. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that would fly. Uh, I am going to get rid of the articulated. That's for fucking sure. That's going to go pretty soon. So, um, just because, you know, I wasn't aware of, ninja i wasn't aware of articulated points i wasn't aware like honestly i had no idea that these even existed and i actually chose that name um one by mistake because originally i was going to do a youtube channel with another person and it was just going to be a show it wasn't going to be an actual channel and um that kind of blew up in my face and so here we are and I, I stuck with it as kind of a tongue in cheek, like that whole dimple Chad hanging Chad, that election in Florida in 2000. And then I saw that there were all these other articulated. And I was like, okay, so one, uh, I wasn't that bright when I came up with that. And two, I should probably change that anyway, whatever. But, um, your love of action man and action force and leading you to serve. I got to say in 1982, when I first picked flash up off the peg that, um, that led me to do that. And just because I think she's a fucking badass, there's a picture of my wife. Because my wife is also in the infantry. She's one of only 26 female infantry officers in the entire U.S. Army. Holy shit. Yeah. Went to ranger school. That's why she has that that little, little baby-ass ponytail because they shaved her fucking head. But yep. yeah. Yeah. So my wife, uh, she yeah, she's in the same infantry battalion as me. And that's me in Afghanistan and then in Africa. Eight years apart. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, you know, we're just sharing. Whatever. I'm not I'm not uh, getting on a soapbox. I'm just sharing. So. Very <laughs> cool. And um, speaking of uh, six-inch toy lines that uh, we both might know a little bit about, uh, you know a little bit more than I do. What's up with this guy? <laughs> there yeah. he is. He's right there. <laughs> Where to begin? Where yeah. to begin? Um, I, 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 I first met Bobby, I think, um, it was around November, December of 2020. 
Yeah, November, December 2020. Uh, Michael Michael French actually reached out to me. Michael and Bobby had connected over on an email or messenger or whatever. Uh, and they were getting ready to have a, a, a private video chat and just introduce each other, you know. I think Bobby had reached out to Michael because of one of his videos. Um, he explained who he was. And Michael was like, oh, well, why don't I, I bring Tony on? You know, he's more the Action Force guy than I am. Um so that was the, f the first time we met on this video chat and I instantly kind of took a liking to Bobby. And then, um, I, then I, I had him on the show. I think he was on retro blasting as well. And, um, fast forward a few months, we kind of were getting ready for the first iconic con in 2021. And, um, Bobby had asked me to send him some profile headshots. Mm -hmm. And in, and in my mind, I'm like, Damn this, this this dude is is gonna make like a custom head, and that's what was in my mind. I was like, this guy's right. gonna send me a head of this figure, uh, and, and and then I got a message from him. It was like, hey, I've got some images of you in um, in Iraq, like some stuff that was either on Analog Toys or on Facebook or something. He's like, have you got any better images of your rifle? And I'm like. Ah, he's going to get someone to do my rifle. Or, or I thought maybe he was going to create my rifle and give it to another character in in the line. And then, of course, right. Iconicon 2021, I realised that his um his grand plan was was much bigger than what I ever anticipated. Yeah, that's that's super cool. And then George says, "I remember that Iconicon where Bobby revealed Desert Rat." Yeah, that was absurd. Yeah, uh, just just kind of watching that happen, and um, it was kind of funny watching another little desert rat reveal kind of spill out. So uh, we're, we're going <laughs> to talk about that in a second. But um, Bear Eleven Charlie says, "What a great way to spend a Saturday night! Two fellow veterans talking about toys. Very cool. Thank you very much." Yeah, and then so. um, World Made of Cardboard had to ask him, uh, "How about Toy Guru? <laughs> <laughs> How about him?" Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Whatever with that dude. I don't know. Anyway. So so he rolled out Desert Rat. And why why is Desert Rat important? Like what's what's the importance of Desert Rat to to you and in the grand scheme of action force? I'm kind of kind of segueing into something. I know you know, but well, so I I I don't think at the time Bobby realized part of, of this story, but um he 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 wanted it to be a throwback to the original line, which is that's where the code name came from. Desert Rat was a was a character. Um, well, well they, technically they weren't characters in the original Action Force. It was just, hey, this is a World War II British soldier from the yeah. deserts of Africa. Yeah. Um, a desert rat. But, yeah. So because of you know. He was designing the figure based on based on images of when I was actually working private security. I had actually left the special forces at the time. I was working private security in, in Iraq, and of course, I'm all in desert tan. Um, you know, I've got the coyote tan uh, vest on and all, and all of that stuff. So, if he was going to pick a code name from any of those first series figures, Desert Rat was the one that that suited. So it was like so it's a throwback to the original 1982 character. That's why we've got uh, the red, yellow, and blue packaging, like the original Action Force card backs. But what I don't think Bobby realized at the time was that the 1982 Action Force figure was based on one of my favorite Action Man figures from 1980, I think it was, which was the Long Range Desert Group, um, which is very similar to like the, the origins of the SAS in World War II. There weren't exactly the same but it was this these small like behind enemy lines raiding parties who used to raid air you know the nazi airfields in north africa and and that kind of thing so um you know go going to war in uh in shorts <laughs> uh wearing, wearing the arab headdress all that kind of thing so um mm -hmm. yeah so th th this is technically the third iteration of of desert rat where you had the original action man you had the Palatoy Action Force, you got the Valverse Action Force, and then of course there's something else coming. Yep. And then uh that's for you from Jim Largo. 
Alavers is a handsome figure. I bet Bobby took some creative license with the head sculpt. <laughs> Maybe he did. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. That's, you know, that's... a lot of a lot of people a lot of people have asked me over the years why Bobby made the figure look like I look now and not like I looked in those photos when I had hair and stuff like that. Um, and I, I remember when the first reveal. I, I was like, I like that it's how I look now because obviously p people see me on YouTube. It's like if he made it look like I was 10, 12 years younger, it's not really going to look like the way people see me now. But then when we were developing the backstory of the character and everything, um, it, it actually fitted in really well with the vision that Bobby had that I kind of helped massage um, yeah. particularly around the relationship between this character and Condor. Um, yeah. It actually fitted in a lot better that he would be in his kind of mid to late 40s and that kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. And then uh, Lilith is saying that she's still waiting for a Desiree and a Chippendale outfit. Uh, look, it, <laughs> it, it, it's easy. You just pop the head off and you put it on Sergeant Slaughter. You know? There you go. <laughs> in, there you in go. The wife beater. <laughs> and then World Made of Cardboard wants to know, what is it like to have an action figure of you and a toy line that had such a great influence on you? I have consistently struggled to put this into words. Um, it's it's not something that I that I ever wanted or desired. I never. I never wanted to to be a, a character in in this, but it's um, look looking back now at at my life, not just my my military service and all that, but also what what, what I've done with 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 Action Man and Action Force, where I have dedicated a large part of my adult life to. <clears throat> documenting the history of this toy line for future generations. You know, the, the, the videos that I've created will be there forever, long, long after I'm gone. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm really careful to kind of not sound arrogant, but it's, um, Bobby, Bobby seeing that in me that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the most well known action man, action force YouTube channel around yep. and that military service and, and and all of that it was um a very humbling honor that he kind of bestowed upon me um yeah it still it's it still blows my mind it still blows my mind that, that you know that i i have a case of 20 of these and i've got a whole bunch of loose ones and God knows what's going to happen when the Desert Trooper comes out. Because the what the what I've always wanted to, to build like a, a like an eight man squad or two four man. Um, yeah. What what in the British Army we would call an eight man team a section with two squads or two fire teams yeah. make up a section. Yeah, we yeah so we've always wanted a squad to build this and eight man teams, team. Yeah. yeah. And the one thing that 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 hinders that with Desert Rat, even with the customizability of of this line, is because of the tattoo on the arm. So when the desert trooper comes out, I'm going to be able to just use the torsos off them. And I can, <clears throat> this has obviously got, you know, the, the low cut boots, the desert trooper is going to have the high boots. So yeah. all of a sudden I'm going to have all of this variation um, to be able to, to customize and have my eight man squad in all of these, this same color scheme. So, yeah. Very cool. And then uh, Michael says you deserve it. Very cool. Thank you, Michael. And then uh, Will says, not being arrogant, uh, just acknowledging well-known accomplishments. Thank you for all you have done. So, Thank you. And then uh, Lilith says, Tony has done a lot for community as an action man, and I can understand why uh, Bobby would want someone like Tony to represent the future in the line as in putting your right foot forward. Yeah. It, you know, when, when I saw that rollout, I was like, you know what? Like it, A, I thought it was really, really deserved. And B, I thought it made a lot of sense. It just makes sense. You know, you, you are that action man, action force historian. Yeah. Your your character is the regimental historian, which we were going to kind of touch on because I, I have a picture of the actual box flattened out. 
And I mean, you're, you're freaking SAS, it, man. It's just, it just it's, it's so when, 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 when you know me and you know my history and, and my feelings towards the, this particular line and, you know, and kind of what I, I've done, this is really meta. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's um, like fourth wall shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy. it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Tac Tac Toys with Film says, uh, good morning, Tony, and chat. I'm awake here in the UK for the Australian F1. Uh, nice surprise to find this stream. Well, thanks for finding it. And uh, yeah, congrats on a great figure. Desert Rat is part of my uh, growing Action Force collection. Awesome. And then uh, Michael Demmer said, I would buy an articulated. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so you will get your Desert Rat squad and then a Vanguard to create the greatest Action Force team ever. You know, the, the problem, my, my team used to roll around, when I was doing private security, we would roll around in three armored, we had like up armored land cruisers. We had three. Yeah, yeah those, with, uh, what, FAVs, fully armored yeah, civilian yeah. vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, so we would have three vehicles. There would always, there'd be, there'd be three guys in the, in, the, in the alpha vehicle, three guys in the Charlie vehicle, and then only two in the middle vehicle because that was like our um, ambulance type thing. We, we didn't have back seats in it, so we were... If in a, you know if we needed to actually get a casualty, in. so so I'm like I'm going to build my eight man squad. Now I need three of those damn vanguards. So they yeah. better they better it's, not it's, cost as much as the engine of vengeance. Holy shit! Yeah. It's like your <laughs> casualty collection. Get out of dodge vehicle. I, yeah, I, I I'll tell you what we got, and, and this is kind of off the rails, but uh, we got in this firefight once, and this dude. Uh, I, I'm not going to say what happened to him, but he he needed to be Kazavak, right? And the the difference for anybody who cares who's who's listening and watching, the difference between Kazavak and Medivac is Kazavak is no care and route, right? You just like get him the hell out of there. And this stupid little Toyota, you know, you know, in the Middle East, right? It's all those dumb little white pickup trucks, and yep. it just comes backing up down this road, and it's like just like blasting down this road backwards, slams on the brakes, and these two Colombian guys just throw this dude in the back of the truck and it was gone just like that fast yeah and i was like later man you're lucky he gets to leave and uh i'm gonna switch gears a little bit but uh george aiken question for you guys what grails are you still looking for i recently acquired a grail in the uh uh the action man fire tender which is a massive massive toy um what grails am I looking for? Wow. Um, I, I often talk about the the flag, the, the GRJ flag. It's one of those. I don't know if I really want one because I don't know if I've got a space like that in which to display it because I would have to display it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do believe they were sold in Australia, but not in massive numbers. So like they don't come up here very often and, okay. you know, shipping something from that from, from the States. But, you know, what... Here's, a, here's an answer for you, George, because I was thinking about this the other day. I would really like to complete my Coleco Rambo collection. I have everything from the first series, all the vehicles, the play set, all of the figures. The second series of Coleco's Rambo was produced in far, far lower quantities. Extremely rare. You're talking about um, uh, T.D. Jackson, Snake Bite. Chief, uh, Whip Action, Warhawk, X-Ray, Dr. Hyde, those those figures and some vehicles. Um, like all, all of those to me are, are, are grails. It's like if I ever went down that route, I would have to complete it. But like every single figure is like $300 plus if you get them complete. But that's an expensive road to go down. But um, yeah. maybe one day we'll see. Uh, I'm... I'm trying to, you know, so there's that whole saying, how do you devour a whale, right? One bite at a time. And I'm, I'm trying to get more action for stuff. So I got, I got my robo skull. I have a bunch of Z4 stuff. Uh, some of the SAS stuff. I, I want to get a sea lion. I, I got a shadow track, you know, so I'm like, I'm more slowly, but surely kind of work on action for stuff. Uh, Joe, I, I don't really know if I have a Joe Grail left because I have 
every large thing that I want. I don't want, um, I don't want the space shuttle. I just, uh, I'm not a, not a fan of that. So, yeah, but yeah, I, that's, I, yeah. that's never appealed to me. The Defiant. No, no, no they, and and the Defiant, like, sure, it's impressive, but it's collapsing under its own weight, and you see, like, the 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 tracks are like collapsing under, and things break, and it just the the brittle nature of it, and a lot of these things weren't designed to last that long. I have a Crusader. The man bought me a Crusader. It it's cool, whatever. It hangs on the wall, and yeah, I I don't I don't know. I'm I'm getting toward the end of Joe. So I, I'm yeah. getting a lot more toward the action force stuff. And that, that's kind of where I'm living. And real quick, I got to show this because I have to ask Pericles. Uh, Zazel and Adam had a game night stream, which I am tracking. Uh, I was a question in Jeopardy. I would really like to know uh, what my question was, but that's that's actually pretty cool. So. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, so just getting back to the chat. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to move off this slide. So here's here's your box, and I thought it was cool that your box was different than all the others because it is that throwback to the Palatoy Action Force. Yeah, yeah, which is which is really awesome. And uh, here's that. Yeah, my fifty three thousand dollar action figure. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Tac Tac Toys says, uh, by the way, Tony, thank you for your service. Uh, Chaz the Guru. Sir. <laughs> Happy to serve. There it is, right? We're stealing that. Yep. And then Chazaguru says, Tony, your figure has incredible credibility because of your military service. Thank yeah. you. There you go. I, You know, I like the fact that it's you now. I think if it was you then, that'd be kind of, because Sarge is Sarge now-ish. You know, it's not, yep. it's, it's not 80, 85, 86 Sarge. It's, it's Sarge now. But well, that's kind of the thing, you, like when you, when you read the comics, it, it makes sense. When you th and when you think about it in the context of, of of the comments, like Bobby based the figure on photographs of me that were taken between like 2009, 2011, maybe 2008. Mm -hmm. But the Action Force story is set in what, 2028, 2029? Yeah. So if you're going to put me into that story, of course I'm going to look older. I'm going to be... You know, I mean, he never he never went the whole hog and gave him a beer belly, but uh, he just used the standard action force body. Uh, much appreciate that, Bobby. Um, you don't have, yeah, a beer you know, belly. lost the hair and everything. So, yeah, and that, that's what Bobby L. Collins said. Action force is set in the future. So yeah, 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 absolutely, totally makes sense. And uh, yeah, so there's the action force desert rat figure that we were talking about, which is also rad. You know, it's got a belt you know, machine gun and shorts. Can't go wrong with that. Some there, there are some guys that like. I, I have educated myself on Action Force through researching all the videos that I've made, but there are guys out there who are well more versed in Action Force than I. I'm I'm very versed in Action Man. Action Force is something I had as a kid, but I didn't even really get into collecting it until, well, until George Aitken walked into my life and sent me a mystery box. Um, I had a lot of the stuff uh, as a kid. Um, and there's one guy, Gary Atkinson, who I've bought a lot of stuff from. He's he's a big time collector, but you know, has has bought and sold things over the years. And and he tells me that there is only collectors believe there's only about six or seven carded desert rats left in existence. Yeah. Six or seven carded desert rats. And I paid around in US dollars, it was about eight hundred dollars. And the condition is similar to this, like a nice car, but you can see the bubble's a little bit squished. Um, it's in that kind of condition. Can you imagine if there was a Star Wars figure where there were only six carded ones known to exist? That yeah. wouldn't be selling for $800. That'd be no. selling for 80000 at like Hakes Americana or something like that. Um, yeah, rarity, desirability, well, you've got to factor all this stuff in. So, right, right. Um, but yeah, I, I was very lucky to be able to acquire one of these um, from, from a great guy. His name's John Bow. Um, he's a collector of Action Force, but again, you know, he sells a little bit of stuff. He actually appeared in an episode of there was an episode of Toy Shop on Tour in the last couple of months where um, part of the episode they go around to this guy's house and he's got this wall of carded Action Force. That's the guy 
that I got my card of desert rat from. So that's awesome. Uh, that's, that's so it took really me a while cool. to persuade him. He didn't want to sell it to someone overseas because he didn't want to ship it overseas. But uh, I managed to to talk him around. Yeah, yeah, that is super cool. And um, yeah, so there it is. There's the there's a comparison between the old and the new. And I I didn't go way way back. I just kind of grabbed the two. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's my desert rat figure. You know, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Not a big deal. You know what I mean? It's, it's just it's just mine. I pulled it out of a box. And uh, so this is the uh, Action Force mission files that has you in it. Yeah. And how important was you, how important was it to you that regimental historian was put in there? I know we, we, we kind of touched on it, but why is that so important to you? So, so, so on, on the, on the file, all the file cars, they've got their primary specialties and their secondary military specialties. Mm -hmm. uh, primary specialty is special forces, secondary skills, Medic, signaler, parachutist, regimental historian. Now, I was not a regimental historian when I when I was in the military, but all British regiments have a regimental historian. It's that's not your kind of full time job, but you know, you kind yeah, of it's an additional on, on, duty. Yeah, yeah. And again, going back to that, you know, this is just so meta that I've become the, the character in, in this line and. Um, the reason I was such a good fit for it was that combination of not just the military service, but the fact that I'm a fan of the line and I have been documenting its history. And I said that to Bobby, like, like, this is a genuine role in the British military. Um, it was a bit of a nod, nod, wink, wink to all of the action force videos that I'd ever made. Um, so that, 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 that was one of my contributions. I think, I, I think I, I wrote the file card um, I just, I think I kind of said to Bobby, I wanted to have a crack at it. And I wrote the file card and, and when Bobby received it, he was like, Hey man, it's way too long. Like it doesn't, it doesn't fit on here. And he, oh, yeah. he trimmed it down and, and tweaked it, but we really worked on, on the backstory of this, this character together. And, um, what the, the whole thing where the, the comic came about, I believe initially after Iconicon, when the figure was revealed, me and Bobby sat down on a video chat about a week later and we discussed a bit more about the character. We had some very similar ideas. I just kind of tweaked some of Bobby's ideas to go. So, so as an example, he, he wanted my character to be a mentor to Condor, an older mentor type, and he was going to make him a more senior officer, like a major. And I said, no, in the special forces, a mentor to like a lieutenant or a captain would actually be the senior enlisted man in that troop. It would be a staff sergeant. Yep. Like, I don't want to be an officer character because when I first went through aptitude training to join the military, the recruiters were trying to encourage me to go to the Royal Military College and become an officer. And I was like, I don't want to. I want to be a, a grunt. I want to be general enlistment. So I didn't want that for this character either, but it just made a lot more sense it makes the dynamic of their relationship work a lot better. I'm the, the older, the, the character in the, the character, I'm the older, more experienced mentor to the officer, but he is, but Condor is still in charge. He's still. Right. So, it, so uh, when I, when I made like the, 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 the short film, I, there's a phone conversation between me and, and Condor where he's like trying yeah. to bring it back into action. And I keep referring to him as boss. And I remember I'd sent Bobby the script for that short film um, before he saw a single frame of, of footage. And he came back and he didn't like the dialogue. Um, and specifically, I was like, well, what part of the dialogue don't you like? And he's like, oh, you're calling him boss. And I'm like, that is an SAS thing. You don't call officers sir, uh, in the special forces. They're boss. They're referred to as boss. Um, and after I kind of explained that, then it, it stayed in. And I don't know if he ever calls him that in the comic. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've read it. But um, yeah, yeah, there, there, there was a time there where the comic series, for the time being anyway, Bobby was not going to make any more comics after issue seven right. until he got an, a, a, a publishing group to basically take it on. And then it was kind of after the short film came out, he took elements from that and he was like, 
no, I'm mm. going to do the comic and I want the comic for Joe Fest. And it was, um, yeah, but Bill wrote the story. I had some input into it as well. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I, so I didn't write the story. Like the, the first draft got sent to me and I had some comments and Bobby had some comments. So it's been really awesome how, how Bobby has really let me have a level of, um, at the end of the day, Bobby still makes all the decisions. It's his toy line and I, and I respect that. Um, but if I throw out a cool idea and, and he likes it, he'll, he'll incorporate it. So, but you yeah. also add that realism to it because it's the same for us in the United States. So, you know, I, at, at my level, or I'm a, I'm a senior non-commissioned officer, and so I get a lot of younger lieutenants, you know, and a lot of them are like college kids. They've, they've never deployed. They're what we call slick sleeves because here in the U S like we wear our, our combat patches on our right sleeve. So if you've never deployed, you're, you're what we refer to as a slick sleeve. And so I get a lot yeah. of these like young lieutenants and I am their senior enlisted advisor. But at the end of the day, they're technically in charge. They are in charge of directing the, the tactical combat operations of my platoon. But I'm just a senior enlisted advisor to go, yeah, you know what I mean? But tactfully, you know, professionally pull them aside and be like, sir, I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah I, I totally get it. But you actually, you know, your experience, it adds that kind of real world stuff that it, it just makes it better. So yeah. um, I have to put this up because I, I started and I was waiting. Uh, Cutthroat Comics, uh, Chris is asking, Tony, will you be signing figures at Joe Fest this year? Yeah, 100% I will be. So the um, I know we're going to get on to the, the Retro Desert Rat later. Yep. I will be signing all of those before we go to the show. So they'll all be be signed. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we're going to have some of these available for sale. I, I don't charge for, for signatures um, or, or autographs, whatever you want to. It, it, yeah, it, to me, it's a signature. Yeah. Well, no, it's an autograph because I don't really sign my my name. I sign it Desert Rat. Desert and if you Rat. want, I'll do it Desert Rat with an a Tony R, um, you know, in, in some small writing. Um, but yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, just come up to the booth. I'll sign comics. So, but I, but I will only sign Desert Rat figures or Desert Rat comics. Don't come up and ask me to ask me to sign your, uh, I don't know, Lieutenant Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll sign. I'll autograph that. Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon. Oh man, it's so terrible. And uh, my buddy well, Gaz is in the house. No, so. You know what? I'm going to sign it because, like, I'm Tony Roberts, and I'll be like, "Oh yeah, this will be this is Julia Roberts." <laughs> yeah. Oh God, it's something. That um, that cover girl looks like freaking Joan Rivers. Oh, I don't know what it is with some of their freaking head sculpts. Some of their head sculpts are just out of control. So um. I'm just going to scroll down real quick and look. Uh, they're all talking about the Emu War. And uh, what, Backwood what? says uh, it, the Emu, Emu War, right? The the critter, the creature. The Emu War, was that? Actual thing I in Australia? I have no idea, George. I, uh, I, no yeah, idea. I don't know, but yeah, George and Zazel are talking about it, so whatever. And uh, Backwood says hi. He says hi to you, so. Nice. Very cool, very cool, very cool. I'm just scrolling through. Uh, hey, look. Drew G's here. What's up, dude? Hey, Drew. Just getting nice here. Two awesome guys. Can't wait to hang out with you two. Yeah, man. That, that'll be awesome. You guys were busy as shit last year. You guys were so busy. I remember because, like, you and I had talked. You, you were there um, Friday night, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's when I brought you that timber. Yep. Yeah, because you said you were looking for a timber, and I was like, oh, I got a spare one of those, right? So I, like, wrapped it up all nice and pretty and bubble wrap. I don't even know why I bubble wrapped it. And uh, I just, I, I remember I walked up and like Bobby and I were talking last episode It somehow something magical happened. I was only like the fourth or fifth person in line at the door for that early opening. And as soon as the doors opened, there was already like this massive line at your guys' table. And I was like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to wait in line and I'm going to hand Tony this, this freaking timber figure, you know, and I walked up and blah, blah, blah. You know, I just kind of handed you the figure and I walked off and then I came back to buy stuff and I had to wait in a longer line. I was like, I should have bought shit when I was in that line, but yeah, that, the, that was, uh, that was crazy. And the, 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 the draw last year. Yeah. So, so the Friday night was way, way busier than, than we had any of us had anticipated. 
Um, yeah. It, 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 it was nuts, but we we just rolled with it. We got into a really good rhythm. There, there was me, Sal, Ryan, and Bobby, yeah. mm -hmm. and we were just, you know, I was not just signing figures. I was serving customers well uh, as well. It was, um, that was really cool. And then Saturday was not quite as busy, but it stayed real busy. And then, you know, it wasn't really until late on Saturday and then even Sunday morning when I actually got an opportunity to go and do some toy shopping myself because prior to that, we just couldn't get away from from the booth. But the big draw last year was um, was that there was some leftover Series 1 stock which had sold out everywhere else. Yeah. There wasn't an exclusive last year, was there? No. No. Mm -mm. No. So I'm like, this year you've got Warpath Eclipse – Yep. Something to do with, with Desert Rat. There's something Some, else that's yeah, been something. teased. I think you need <laughs> action points or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah so it's it's going to be crazy, man, this year. Ridiculous. i tell you what I don't want to do. I don't want to be fucking counting action points. <laughs> no. 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 no, You guys are going to – I don't know how you're going to control that, but, yeah, it's going to be nuts. And then George Aiken says, you're going to be hard to miss at JoeCon because you'll be the one with the entourage wearing sunglasses. Uh, but Bobby just said there was. There was the exclusive Sarge with the soft goods jacket and there was the uh, the prototype sets. Yes, there was. Mm. And um, then uh, Patrick says, Mayor Damon. Mayor Damon. Yeah. All right. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, and then, uh, yeah, here, here's, here's Ryan. Everyone really wanted to meet me. That's why there was a line. They, they they wanted to meet Matt Movie Six One One, his dad. <laughs> you know, and like when when I walked up to your guy's line, like I wasn't like, "Hey, it's Chad. What's up, dude?" Like, let's rub elbows and shit. You know, what I mean, like I didn't say anything to anybody until Sal turned around and he's like, "Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, Chad?" And I'm like, "Oh, what's going on, Sal?" And then you know, then I saw you and I was like, "Here, dude. Here's your. You know, here's it was your, cool. Here's your, yeah, yeah. It was it was really awesome. Yeah, that's right. The exclusive Sarge. I'm sorry." He is correct. Thank you, Bobby. So real quick, now that kind of caught up with the chat, there's there's a panel on here. Do you you care to talk about why that panel's on there? Um, this was obviously in, inspired by that short film that short. I that I made, which was right. which was a, a blend of real world experience. Um, you know, it, it, it's <laughs> fucking uh, a. Thank you. Sorry. It was it was bringing some of those real world elements to the character. Um, you know, I've I've I was going to say I've made no secret of it, but um, certainly certainly on my on my Patreon I, I, I talk about it a lot. But I since since my service. Um, I, I have struggled with mental health. I've struggled with alcoholism. Um, yeah. You know, I, I would never, I would never, I don't know is that I'm, I'm not an alcoholic, but I've, I've been a binge drinker over the, uh, for a long time I self-medicated with alcohol because it would, if I could pass out drunk, I didn't, I didn't have nightmares. Yeah. Um, that was the, the way I, I would get a good night's sleep. So, uh, so yeah. So when me and Bobby were really, talking about the backstory of this character and fleshing out the backstory i wanted him to to be an alcoholic or at least have you know an, an abusive relationship with alcohol um yeah. and to have ptsd this this very very realistic character you know this this guy who in the in the the context of the action force story has you know fought the worldwide war on terror at, you know Operation Iraqi Freedom, all of that stuff. Yeah. And then 15, 18 years later, he finds himself in, you know, this fractured America being being brought into to, to this other conflict. You know, the guy's gonna bring some emotional baggage with him. And I, I think I think it makes him an, uh, an interesting character. It makes him a flawed character. I didn't want my character to be a, you know, to, to, to me, like, you know, Condor is the you know, he's the, he's the, he's the, he's the Duke of Action Force, you know, he's the, yeah. 
the shiny the, the, the ultimate soldier out, out, out the front. Right. I wanted my guy to have a, f a, f a few issues, you know. Um, he's not a ninja like Snake Eyes, but, you know, one of the things I liked about Snake Eyes, reading the comics when I was a kid and seeing that, that Vietnam backstory that he was physically disfigured. Um, yeah. yeah, he got tuned you know, up a bunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it was important for me to to have a, a, a character like, like that in, in the line. And, um, yeah, and Bobby seemed to like it and, and go with it as well. So, yeah. And I, I have to tell you, you know, when I, when I saw that short and the times that I have seen you, you know, mention a thing here or there, and, and then when I, when I read this mission file, I have to say that I struggled with alcoholism. Like I'm an alcoholic. I haven't had a drink in years, but you know, I, I completely understand it. I used to drink myself to sleep as well. And, uh, I can't sleep without the TV on and there's things like that. So I, yeah. I, I gotta say, Tony, like between you and me, I truly respect your openness about it. It's not something that I ever really kind of openly talk about, but man, I, I, I have the utmost respect for you for doing that. Thanks, Chad. Um, I, it was, I don't think it's something that, that I could have talked about 10, maybe even eight years ago. Yeah. I've, I've, I've spent a lot of time working on, you know, my own, my own mental health and, and, and yeah, and, and, and my, my patrons know, I, I talk about a lot of stuff on there because, um, the re the reason I do it is I, I think, because if, if someone like me is quite open about that and we'll, and we'll discuss it, yeah. if it just helps one person, then, it, then it's, it, then it's been worthwhile. Um, yeah, that that's that that's the way I see it, and yeah, I I I continue to struggle in it, and it's you know we 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 all articulated ninja man. He dropped this video yesterday that I can I, I I wanted to write a comment, I couldn't. I was literally in tears. I don't know if you know the video I'm I'm talking about, but um, no. that, that, but now that, now that I'll really, go find it. Yeah, that that it, I think he he called it. Um, it's it's a, a first episode of a new series he's doing. It was called Real Talk. And he discussed with his audience about, um, you know, men's mental health and kind of suicide awareness and all of this stuff. And it it really struck home with me. And um, yeah, yeah. If I, I'm not saying that anyone who who has a platform like this, they're not obligated to go and do that. Um, but I just feel with with my life experience that. If I can be open and honest about it, then yeah, if it helps just one person, man, it's it's been worthwhile. So yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's heavy, you know, like it's it it's real heavy stuff. And you know, um I can't thank everybody in the chat enough for all the stuff that you guys are saying, but yeah, that it it's it's heavy shit, you know, and that yeah. 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 I you know, say what you will about that movie Fury, um, and you know that that one part where he just kind of goes behind that that vehicle or whatever, and he just fucking breaks down, but he does yeah. it away from his troops. Like every time I see that part, I'm like, oh. Or in the first in in First Blood, in the very first Rambo movie, when he breaks down to Troutman at the end, I that it it always stabs right through me every time I see that. Yep. Um, and the world made a cardboard said, uh, thank you, Tony, your willingness to help others by sharing your life. Yeah, totally. Very cool. Thank you. And then, uh, yeah, thank you, Necro. That's cool. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, I, again, I, I, I can't, I can't say enough how, how much I, I thought that was really, I appreciate that, man. Especially it's, it's really you know, big from, of you. from a fellow vet. That means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's super big of you, man. So I, I wanted to say that. You know, I'd I'd say that to your face, but you know, we're we're hanging out in public right now, so I'm gonna say it to you right now. Yeah. And um, now we're gonna move on. So I'm gonna ask you 
I don't know if it's a tough question. Do you have a preferred scale? Um, my opinion on that has obviously changed over the years. So 12 inch was always my favorite scale because of, um, like when, when I first got kind of got that action man and I, and I started to learn about the military, you know, I, I always seemed to hone in on, I wanted to be some kind of an infantier, um, potentially airborne infantry for a long time. I wanted to be a Royal Marine commando, but that, you know what I wanted to be a Royal Marine commando because John Rambo was a green beret. And although we don't call them green berets, the Royal Marine commandos are our green berets. Right. Um, but then, you know, then I realized that all that time spent with the Navy, you know, I was better off being in the army kind of thing. So my wife wants to say hi to you. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hi, ma'am. How are you? <laughs> Dressed for the occasion, I see. <laughs> yeah, no, she's kind of not. She just came to say hi. <laughs> What's going on? I'm looking forward to meeting you again at, uh, at Joe Fest this year. So you're coming this year as well, yeah? No, I'm not. Oh. I'm actually going to be in the field for a month. So I have to take my uh, companies out for some training. So yeah, yep, yeah, we're living that life. They get to go sleep in the dirt for a month. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't promise that I won't get Chad into any trouble because I might. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we're gonna do it. <laughs> It'll be okay. You're used to it. <laughs> okay. All right. Love it. Love you. <laughs> she just wanted to come say hi. That's fine, man. That's fine. Yeah. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Go ahead. So for so for a, for a long time, I, I I never wanted to drive tanks or fly helicopters or anything like that. I wanted to be a boots on the ground soldier. So what appealed to me in childhood, the reason Action Man was so appealing is I could customize him with all the different bits of equipment and you know his web gear. I could put different things in the pouches, and that's what I liked about it. So that's why I always preferred twelve inch. So now. When it comes to modern day, um, I really like the six inch scale because they've it still has that level of customizability, and you can have all the certainly with Action Force anyway, you know, all the different vests, and you've got pouches for your magazines and and all of that stuff. But then there is something really awesome about the three and three quarter inch scale, the vehicle possibilities. Certainly with Action Force, I love the whole teams thing you know z force yeah. and sas they're my they're my guy I actually even though i was sas i actually think i like z force more as toys just yeah me too <laughs> it's so the, good the, the green that's why i put coral in there with, with the red you know it yeah it's just it's so awesome so um i i i appreciate what the different scales bring to a toy collection or, or a toy display so i would say at this point in time my favorite scale is three and three quarter inch six inch and 12 inch <laughs> it's all three i like yeah. that i like that uh world made a cardboard sent a super chat while you were talking uh in the question of scale did any of you play with the 132nd scale army man you took on the little green army man 100 percent i do i have britain's detail because I've told this story many times before. I knew at the age of like seven that I was going to be a toy collector when I grew up because my dad was a toy collector and he used to, he used to collect die cast metal soldiers. Um, but yeah, they were those one to 32 and there's uh, Britain's toy soldiers. This famous British company did toy soldiers for many years during the seventies and the eighties. They had a line called Britain's detail which were, they weren't made of metal. They were plastic, but they had metal bases. But they were really well sculpted. The paintwork was excellent. Uh, so I had tons of those guys when, when I was a kid. Um, most kids growing up in Britain at the time had, had had toy soldiers, yeah. I still have a bunch of little green army men all over the place. I have one in my bathroom. The guy who's like skull dragging, he's just like chilling yep. on the counter in the bathroom. Anyway, world made a cardboard. Thank you for that super chat, man. You you could have just thrown Thank it you. out as a question, and I would have I would have answered it. And then uh, Bear Eleven Charlie says, "I'm now seven years sober, but still working on some of the other stuff." Very cool, man. One day mm -hmm. at a time. Yeah, that's yep. really awesome. Uh, I start a couple of other comments uh, just while we were talking. Um, Lilla says it does help Tony. It's important to shed light on this topic and make people aware of it so they don't hide it in the shadows. Yeah, 
And, you know, I have to say from a, from a U.S. service member perspective, um, for the longest time, like if you even had the slightest showing of any kind of mental or, you know, behavioral health concerns, like that was a problem. Like they would, yep. they would come at you with like rubber stamps. And uh, now it's, it's not like that anymore, like, which, which is really good. It, it sucks that it took what it took to get to where we are now with like mental health in the military. But um, yeah, certainly when, when, when I served, it was still very much that, that way. I, I, I can't speak for how it is now. I've been out for a long time. Um, but yeah, if you, if, if you were having mental health issues, you had to hide it, man. You had to hide it. And fortunately for me, I, I didn't, when I served, I started to have mental health issues. Um, the last year, 18 months, I was doing private security work. And then ever since, pretty much. The first, the first few years after my transition to civilian life, I did not find easy at all. Um I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to transition to civilian life or if I'm just going to stay home. I, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, I, I'll tell you after, after my first deployment, I was at, um, I was at a schoolhouse and I was sleeping in the bees. So I was in the barracks in the open bay barracks and I was having a nightmare and, um, yeah, they, they sent me, they sent me to, you know, what they called the shrink back then. And, uh, yeah, they were going to kick me out of the school and they were like, oh, we're going to send you back to your unit and you're probably going to get kicked out. And I was like, okay, this is how yep. you treat people. But anyway, sorry. And then, uh, Matthew Matson asked if I've seen the Rambo and Troutman origin comics. Have you heard about that? Nope. Yeah. But, I, I hadn't heard about that either. They but I, now I need to know. <laughs> yeah. Chuck Dixon wrote one and critical drinker. Oh, really? I'll actually have to check that out. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I threw that out there, and uh, now we know. Cool, very cool. Um, yeah. And then Samuel Edwards says, "I still have a little Green Army man." Any fans of Plan B toy special forces out there? I don't know what they are. It's, there's some special force line that's like a. It was like a, a knockoff line in the '80s a line called special force. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, Michael, but I have a, a weird little like fan boat from them that I, that I think is pretty cool. But uh, yeah. So um, all three are your favorite scale, huh? I like that. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, I listened to you. I listened to your car rant. Uh, yeah. Which yeah I know. After the, um, uh, it was like after the last Hasbro GI Joe panel that, that, that Hasbro did. I appreciate that. Um, and I and I totally got what you were saying, man. I totally got it. But I was like, bro, no love for the 12-inch collectors. What about them? <laughs> like, yeah. I know we're yeah, talking that's... a real American hero. Yeah. You know, 12-inch G.I. Joe was not a real American hero. And uh, and it did see a, a, a very successful renaissance in the in the 90s with like the G.I. Joe classic collection, which started off a little bit rubbish, but you yeah. know, it did get a lot better as uh, as time went on. Um, and I have yeah, several I've, of those 90s 12-inch, the, the Hall of Fames. I have several of those. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't I don't have a, a favorite scale. You know, I, I, I collect all kinds of different stuff. Um, yeah. That's, that's why I wanted to ask you, because you have all of it. So I just thought it was, it would be an interesting question to kind of ask you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've, I've often been, th been thinking of. Um, I've got this massive list of like video ideas that you know I had more ideas to than I actually get around time to to making. Yeah. But one of them uh -huh. was was going to be a video about literally these three toy lines: Palatoy Action Force, Valiverse Action Force, and Action Man. The three different scales, which is better? Because I, I don't have. I don't think you can say which is better. Like you, there's, there's a personal preference and there are, you know, you, the three and three quarter inch, you can't go past that for, you know, the breadth of different vehicles involved and yeah. play sets and things like that. But then action the man had building, quite a yeah. few vehicles as well. That's true. Um, but what you can't really do that much with three and three quarter inch figures, like you can 
the six inch and 12 inch is customize the figures and their equipment. You know, most of them had a backpack and a, and a gun and that was it. So, yeah. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Uh, Zazel, thank you for that. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. I would appreciate it. And um, Tony, what is your favorite toy line to collect? I mean, my, my, my favorite toy line is Pallet Toys Action Man, but I don't really collect that much anymore because I've got... I, I, when I got into vintage toy collecting all the way back in 1993 when I went to a toy show with my dad, I was 16, and it, it was a show for die-cast metal soldiers. That, that, that I was going just along with my dad because that was his thing, and he was at this guy's booth discussing a, a, you know, a purchase... And this guy had a big box of Action Man and $6 million man stuff under the table, which at this show, no one was interested in. So my dad was able to buy the, the whole box for, for $100. Yeah. And, um, and and that got me into it. And that was all I collected for the first 18 odd years I was a vintage collector. I didn't collect other toy lines. But then I, I got to a point where I was like, I've got so much of this stuff now. And I think the first other toy line I went out and collected was Six Million Dollar Man. Because um, I, I, I'm a little bit young for Six Million Dollar Man, but I had an older brother, so I grew up with a Six Million Dollar Man and his um, um, the bionic transport and repair station, so I wanted to reacquire yeah. that. And then I started getting some Mego. And um, today, my favorite line to collect... I would probably say 80s G.I. Joe is um, – that's probably what I buy most of at the moment, yeah. Yeah, 80s Joe. It's a, it's a great toy line, man. It really is. Oh, yeah. I just I, – I don't know. When I got back into collecting as an adult, um, you, you know, it was hard. Like, you know, I'm here, I'm there, I'm deployed, I'm not deployed, I'm this, I'm that, and that. And now that I'm 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 older and I'm more seasoned in my career and I've been settling down, all of this is in the past four years, three, four years. Like oh, I just went nuts. I went nuts. Wow. But a lot of this is my wife as well. So like the, the ma'am really she gets into it with me, like we do it together. Obviously, right, you saw us both at Joe Fest. Um, she buys me a lot of my my larger play sets and vehicles and things like that because you know she she supports it because it brings me joy. But I, I I didn't really know where I was going and, and I was I was getting modern Joes like the, the 2007 to, to 2019, the 25th, 30th, 50th, Pursuit of Cobra, all that stuff. And I was like, oh, I'll just collect modern Joes because they're easier to find than the than the uh, O-ring stuff. Nope, that was wrong. That was that was a bad idea. Because some of the the later stuff, the figure subscription service are so expensive. They're so expensive. Like I bought one that was $300 loose and I was like, Oh God, I shot myself in the foot. Well, <laughs> but, but I have all the, you know, 82 to 94 vehicles and play sets and things like that. So I kind of mix them together and I do yeah. the same thing with the action force stuff, but it, I've been very vocal and it's, it's not because of Bobby. It's not because of you. It's just the truth. And it, it, I I've always said it. The only six inch stuff that I collect is, is Valiverse. I, I can't get into six inch GI Joe. And that's partially because of all of this. When I look at all of this, why do I want classified? It, to me, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, I'm, I'm looking at a Marvel, Marvel legends figure dressed up as GI Joe. And I say that all the time because to me, in my mind's eye, that's what it is. But when I look at, when I look at action force, it's, you know, it's a, it's a call back to something that came before, which I think is cool, but it's something new. It's its own story. I can read the comics. I can get into that story. There's something like with classified. There's nothing. There's just like, yeah. here's dusty, but you know, here's Falcon that looks like Matt Damon. You know? <laughs> and so I just, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I never could. I tried, I did try. And the ma'am actually, um, we were at a, at a comic shop here in town that we always frequent and we walked in the door and she didn't really know. She just saw that the, the spines of the boxes said GI Joe. And so she walked up to the shelf and she grabbed every last classified figure that they had. And it was all wave one and wave two. And she bought them all at once. And I was like, well, I guess I'm into that now. And I tried. I did. I tried. And I was like, nope, I can't do it. But then Action yeah. Force was coming out, you know, with the Kickstarter and things like that. And I was like, I, I dig it. 
And then as soon as I saw Steel Brigade and Sarge, I was like, I'm in. I'm there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all right. So let's let's talk about 2023 really quick. So again, the they redesigned when I talked with Ed, he redesigned the flow of Joe Fest because of what you guys did last year. <laughs> so the arrow points to where you guys will be located. And Bobby and I talked about that at length. And previously last year when you guys were kind of in the same location the the doors to get in were the the doors just below it and to the right and now yeah. this year they're going to be the doors to the far left on the the far end of the auditorium which is, is gonna break up some of that uh traffic jam because so, last year was insane i remember trying to get in the door and your guy's line was out the door so people were getting in the wrong lines. But last year, so what it doesn't really show on the on this map is that that door they used last year below and to the right, you can come into the air conditioned like foyer area and queue in yep. there. So now people are gonna have to queue outside in that Georgia heat. I don't know There's if it's gonna outside be outside. outside. <laughs> they they might be queuing on the inside and then going around. But, but he yeah, said right. that everyone's going to be entering through the left this time. Yeah. So I, I guess we're just going to have to see, see what happens. But yep. that's all thanks to you guys. So, and again, well, uh, because of that. I can't take credit for that. That was that was all Bobby, man. Yeah. That's. But yeah, you're part of it. You know, uh, you know you're part of I'm it. A, I'm happy to be a small part of it. Yeah. 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 It, it, I mean, it is cool. And uh, Michael said, jealous of you guys going to Valicon. Yeah, Valicon's pretty cool. It's a, it's a fun time. So speaking of Joe Fest uh, 23 or Valicon Part 2, what um, what's this all about? <laughs> so, when, so when when you when you had that guest on your on your last episode, that guest that really sucked. Um, yeah, that guy. Mm-hmm. I've I've heard say I've heard Bobby say this twice now that he can't remember if this was his idea or my idea to <laughs> collaborate with Stan Solo Creations and make a vintage style desert rat. It was Bobby's idea. It wasn't my idea. Um, but I remember when he 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 was speaking to me and he was like, you know, I'm I'm thinking about because first first of all I was like. Why, why are you, um, you know, and I'm really good friends with Chris from Stan Solo Creations. It, th this wasn't me. Who's a freaking I like, genius. I, I was saying, but what, why, why are you going to Stan Solo? Not that I had a, an, an issue with that. I was like, you're this toy designer. And he's like, yeah, but nobody recreates the vintage style like he does. Like even Hasbro can't recreate G.I. Joe Owen figures and make them look the same and feel the, the same. Star Wars stuff. The yeah. Star Wars stuff. It doesn't feel the same. He's like Stan Solo's the guy, and I was like, "Hey, man, if you if you want to do," and then he then when he's kind of talked out the idea that it was going to be five POA style, like the originals, but it was going to be of his Desert Rat. Um, it's it's just really really cool. The 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 one thing I think would have made this better is if we had have done this last year and made it like a 40th anniversary exclusive but we'll we'll just we'll just blame covid for that and say this is a 40th anniversary exclusive <laughs> still would yeah. have been more than freaking hasbro did with their 40th anniversary of a real american hero they didn't do shit so sorry oh they oh, they made sorry. they made a cool video with a with a rap song oh god <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was terrible. How wet do you get for your? Oh, what? How much do you like it? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> um, Stop it! This is a kids' show. Incredibly moist. <laughs> moist, super yeah. moist. This figure there, is a, freaking there's a mop awesome. And bucket just off camera. <laughs> yeah. This this figure is awesome. But you, you know, for, for for me, obviously, I I I knew about, I've known about this for a while. Uh, unlike the six-inch desert rat, when that got sprung on me in Iconicon, 
I've known mm -hmm. about this for a while. There's been a lot of back and forth. I haven't ha really had any input into the, the design or anything like that, just as um, as Chris Smith from Stan Solo, as he would send uh, images to Bobby of like, you know, an early test shot and then there were some tweaks made and things. Uh, Bobby was send sending me all, all of that stuff. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought now where I was going that. Yeah, but that's what happens when you get to my age. <laughs> moist. Oh, no, that's where I was going. The reveals of Valifair. I yep. lost my mind, completely lost my mind over the Desert Ops Condor. Yeah. Because I was, I didn't know anything about that. I knew nothing, and I watched it live. It wasn't the show that I was on. I think it was the show with Michael, the second show. Um, I had no idea Bobby was planning that. And straight away, I was like, because I made a, a, a kind of a custom, I called it flashback Condor, too, because Desert Rat in issue eight has flashbacks to when they were, yeah. you know, in some nondescript Middle Eastern country, <clears throat> Iraq. Um <laughs> That one. Um, and, I, and I saw that and I was like, holy shit, he's making the Condor from issue eight. I mean, Condor in issue eight looked like Condor. Yeah. But it was, you know, I, I got where it where it was where it was at. And it's like, it's the issue eight, it's the throwback. And yeah, I lost my mind. So if, if you want to ask how when I got, like I completely lost all control of my bodily functions when that popped up on screen. Yeah, little um, little tinkle. Very cool. Oh, yeah. 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 I have to agree with Jim Largo. Freaking killed it. Yep. That figure is so good. I, uh, I'm i really looking forward to that. Like, I knew I was going to come see you guys no matter what. And, you know, last year I didn't say hi to Bobby once. And I wanted to, but, like, he didn't, he he was, didn't know me. He didn't know me. And he was busy as shit. And I didn't want to be he like, was, hey, uh, He was busy up, as dude? shit, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, and, and I'm I was super unassuming, but, out, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm also talking to customers, but yeah, you know, trying to serve customers as well. But yeah, but Bobby was was busy as shit all weekend, so yeah, and uh, yeah, so I was like, well, you know, this year, uh, you know, because I, 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 I've improved on some relationships, you know, and I, I built other relationships. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna go say hi, you know, like I always do. I'm gonna go say hi, and then I saw this, and I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm, I'm going there immediately. So yeah, that uh, yeah. As soon as I saw this thing come up, I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" That thing is fantastic. That's an awesome figure. He he totally nailed it with that figure. And um, yeah, there he is. So, but Bobby, I don't know if he sent me that photo or if he just posted it straight away on social media of the the test shot. Yeah, I stole. Um, but he, but he, he definitely messaged me, and he's like, "What do you think of the test shot?" And I was like, "I need one. Like, I, I hope, I hope Chris sent you more than one, so you like yeah. you can have one." And 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 he's like, "Chris just sent me the photo. I don't actually have this test shot. This is this you is mean? the Stan Solo." I was like, "Shit, you don't even have one." So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I need that. I need that test shot. And when you see that test shot there, and knowing that that's three and three quarter inch. The, the likeness on that head sculpt, man. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That that dude is skilled. He is super skilled. That's that's really cool that you guys folded him into it. And then World Made of Cardboard says, I've been making cardboard toys for three and three quarter figures since I was a kid. I can't wait to put my Desert Rat in some of those toys along with my other figures. Very cool. I can't wait to have Desert Rat in the turret of the Z Force ATC. That's going to be cool, man. Oh. Speaking of stuff that Palatoy should have given, you know, shared back to Hasbro, that they took that APC and they just made it so much better. That ATC is ridiculous. I have one with a busted turret, and George and I kind of talked about it. Oh, speaking of which, uh, I gotta, I still gotta get into yeah. this, but uh, George and I had been talking about that. Uh, yeah, the the whole reason I was able to get it is because it was missing the turret, and so I like greebled a turret out of like an APC turret and like a scrap iron missile launcher. And I, you know, whatever. but the ATC is in great shape and I put some repro stickers on it. So, and, um, do you have any, uh, awesome memories 
of last year? I know last year was like whirlwind for you. It was it was whirlwind because uh, for me it was I, I was in actually in the states for a little over two weeks. No, I, no, I was I was there. The 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 real the real bad thing. I was like finishing my day job on a Friday, and you know I uh, and I I don't I don't I don't work weekends so. I wanted to fly straight over, but I think it was around the time of, of Bobby's birthday and he was supposed to be going away for the weekend with, with the wife. So I was like, if I arrive on the weekend and he's not there, like what the hell am I going to do? So I delayed my my flight. So I wasn't going to get there until I think I was flying out on the Monday. So I basically, I finished work Friday. I had all of Saturday and Sunday to, sit around just being anxious of just wanting to, to, to start the journey and get over there. Right. And then, and then, and then Bobby ended up having to cancel the weekend away because there was too much prep to do for Joe Fest. So I could have just gone anyway. Um, so, I just, so I ended up being there for two weeks and my memories are of the whole thing, like um, visiting the retro blasting studio was like up there with some of the be- meeting Michael and my, my, yeah. my, of actual Joe Fest, there is a, a video that Scott Hughes took of the first time I saw Michael French, and he walked around yeah. the back of the booth, and we gave him this big. That's probably my favorite memory of the, the whole weekend, and the the and fact that's that in Scott your Joe Hughes Fest video. That. Pardon? That's in your Joe Fest video. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. The fact that Scott was able to capture that on video that 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 was awesome because I, I knew Michael wasn't going to be there till the Saturday. And someone, someone had come up to the booth quite early after doors had opened and said that they had seen Michael in the queue outside. But then I didn't see Michael for hours and I was starting to get quite anxious. That I was actually starting to get a little bit worried. I was like, what the shit? Because it was like two or three hours. And yeah. when, they, when I did finally see him, he was like, no, there was this big queue and it was moving really slow. So me and Scott decided to just go off somewhere and have breakfast. And they came back like two hours later. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, because someone had said they'd seen him outside. And I was like, I can't miss Michael. He's this tallest shit dude in Indiana Jones hat walking around, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I was, but uh... but other, other memories of Joe Fest for me, um, I got chatting to Ron Rude at, um, I, I, I was, I think it was on the Saturday on the Saturday, I took a bit of a break from the booth, um, to go and have lunch in a, in the hotel bar there. Mm-hmm. So I was having a drink and no, it, no, it might've even been the Friday night. I think I was sit I was standing at the end of the bar, having a drink with a guy that I had met through Bobby and, um, on the corner next to me, Ron Rudat was sitting down on his on his own have, having a drink. And I got a little bit annoyed because people around the bar, when they were ordering drinks, were asking, did I want a drink? I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm good. People were asking me for drinks, and it's like no one was addressing this legend next to me, Ron Rudat. Yeah. Um, anyway, I noticed he was getting up to, to leave, and I just said to the bartender, um, you know, put his put his bill on my tab or or whatever. Um the next day I come out of the hotel and I'm in, you know, the desert rat outfit. And Ron, I I hadn't actually spoken to him yet. I was like, I'm I, I'm planning to go and introduce myself at some point. Ron came up to me because of the essays and he was talking to me. And after that, we just started chatting. What an awesome guy, man. Awesome guy. Um, yeah. So that was another really, really good memory was, um, yeah, getting to, to hang out with him a little bit. The uh, the Valiverse panel was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, a really, really good weekend all round. Um, yeah. How, how, how hot and sweaty did you get in your cosplay? Ah, a little, little bit. Yeah, a little, little bit. The thing is, wearing that Cobra officer, just having to wear that mask on your face, you know, because everybody had to do it with, you know, the, uh, the virus or whatever, but just wearing that 
for that long kind of sucks. Yeah. 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 Um, I was only in it for half the day. You know, we, we did our stuff with the finest and then we, we went back to our room and changed out and then came back and shopped some more. But yeah, I, I only did it for the morning, um, for the stuff with the finest, uh, with the voice actor of Destro, you know, we, we kind of walked him in and, uh, he walked in on my wife's arm cause she was in her Baroness costume, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And, uh, then we, we did the, um, the costume contest for the kids. We did that out in the foyer. And then when that was done, we just went and changed out. But, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was, it was a really good time. Yeah. Talking to Ron Rudat, that, that dude's incredible. And just like you and I were talking tonight about what inspired us to join the military. When, when I walked up and we were talking to him, my wife wanted one of his Baroness drawings. And so we were just talking to him and, Oh, what do you guys do? And Oh, you know, we're, we're both in the army. We're both in the infantry. And I told him, I was like, it's because of GI Joe that like that, that shaped my whole life really you know, my, my career, I've, yeah. I've only had one career. And, um, we were kind of talking about that. And then he was talking to my wife and she's like, Oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in the army as well. And I'm in the infantry. And, and he and his wife were like, you're in the infantry. And, and they were just like, boom, just blown away because yeah. Remember when he was writing all this stuff for Scarlet, you know, Scarlet, she was capable. She was combat armed. She was a ranger school graduate. My wife was like, yeah, I was, I was one of the first like 10 females to ever go to ranger school. And so they had this long conversation about, you know, how Scarlet was a ranger school graduate and things like that. And they, the guy's just totally cool. So that, that was a really good time, but yeah. Um, here's, here's a question. I kind of left it up. So I don't know if, if you can answer this or maybe she needs to direct it at somebody else, but, um, Anyone going, not going to Joe Fest? Is there a way that they're going to be able to get a hold of one, or are they going to have to ask somebody to pick it up? Uh, oh, the, the the vintage desert rat. Yeah. Um, so it it is. It's a very limited run. Um, we have so, so as Stan Solo does with like a lot of their Star Wars stuff, yeah. they actually make them available both carded and loose. So. If you want the loose version, you can obviously get it a bit cheaper because the card backs are uh, are not cheap to make. Um, they're made yeah. on really high quality cards. So the, the stand solo card backs are way better than anything that Hasbro puts out. Um, yeah. So there's 1,500 of each, 1,500 carded, 1,500 loose. So 3,000 total figures. Um, I'm not, I don't know, I, I can't sign the loose figures. So I'm signing the 1,500 carded figures. Um, any stock that is left over after Joe Fest will go up on the Valiverse website, but we just have no idea. It could be a dud. We might only sell two dozen, and then Bobby's stuck with all of these five BOA figures. I, I don't know. I highly doubt that. But yeah. Well, look, I, I, I mean, I think Warpath Eclipse is going to sell out a lot quicker than Vintage Desert Rat. Um, I, I do think Vintage Desert Rat is going to be very, very popular because it appeals to um the same audience but also another audience you know the three and three quarter inch scale collectors people who just like stan solo stuff um and that five poa action force people yes exactly so um i am only going to pick up a figure for one person um i don't want anyone else to to ask don't forget i'm traveling over there in with a suitcase, I take camera gear with me. So like, I didn't even have a lot of room last time to bring much stuff back. So I can't be yeah. picking up figures for people, but, um, uh, George Aitken, um, will be getting probably a loose and a carded figure from me just because that guy has done so much for, for, for this channel. Um, he's been so generous over the years. I yeah. uh, would, uh, it would not be gentlemanly of me to not return the, the favor there. Um, so no, so I can't say for certain whether they are going to be, it just depends if there's leftover stock. Um, L Lilith, I'm sure somebody will hook you up. Like Lilith knows enough people. I'm sure somebody can hook her up. And, uh, Jeff Mackle, we sends a $2 super chat. Thank you very much. It says, Tony, when will we see a custom Frank castle? Uh, I, I have no idea. I, I did know someone. It might, I don't know if it was also Jeff. I saw someone in the chat earlier ask me about um, have I made a custom Punisher for Action yeah. Force yet? And if not, why not? I I like the Punisher, but I, I'm a little bit conflicted about my fandom towards the Punisher. Um, 
I'm not I'm not a fan of taking other characters like that and and bringing them in to another mythology. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make like a custom Rambo figure and put it into to Valiverse Action Force. It doesn't it doesn't fit for me. So um, you know, I've made a, a I did a whole video about a a custom Marvel Legends Punisher that I'm where I kind of took the best elements from about three or four different Punisher figures to build my kind of favorite. Um, but yeah, he won't, he won't be, he won't be in my Valiverse action force display anytime soon. He can stay with the Marvel legends. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeff, if that was you that asked previously and I, and I missed it, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't see it till a super chat, man. It's just moving real quick. And it's just me and Tony. So uh, I do apologize for that. Um, Dude, you know, I, it, I know, I know how it works, man. Yeah, and anyone yeah. who wants to complain at, at, at a YouTube host when you've got a busy stream like this because you miss one or two chats, it is really hard to keep up with and and maintain the flow of a conversation. So. Yeah, that's why my eyes keep darting, but I'm you know I'm a hundred percent focused on you, but I, I just keep looking over. Uh, I will hey, you say don't have to explain to me, man. I've I've been on the other side. Like no, this I, is I, nice I, for me to sit here and not you, have to worry. You're about just like starring <laughs> super chats for for Ryan or. <laughs> You yeah. know, he will send me a private message and he's like, I've got to go for a pee break. Can you take over? I was like, ah, oh, okay. Fine, Ryan, with your little child yeah. bladder. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and then yeah. Uh, Samuel Edward, uh, I'm sorry, Samuel Edwards says, I was a little starstruck last year at Valicon. I felt like I knew everybody from y'all at the time, but I got their different story. Uh, I felt like I lost the ability to talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, um, you don't. You don't you don't need to feel start like I'm I'm a I'm a normal dude. You, I'll I'll say hello to to anybody. Um, yeah, but I, I I had to I had to go down to to Perth on a bit. So Perth is like all my family live in Perth. It's the capital of Western Australia. Yeah. Um, but it's like a two hour plane flight from where I live. Um, it's the and it's the closest city to me. Two hour, mm -hmm. sixteen hundred kilometers away. Anyway, I, I was I had to go down there for a business trip for a couple of days, so I decided to stay the weekend. And on the Saturday morning, I you know went to the big shopping mall near where my family live and doing a bit of toy shopping, just walking around. There's like eight or nine different stores I can go into that sell, you know, Legends and Black Series and stuff like that. And I was in this one store, and this dude just come up and he was like, "Tony, Analog Toys," uh, started chatting to me, and I'm like, it's happened to me a few times over the last few years, but because I live in a remote town, it's not something I've got used to because it's like a once a year type thing. Right. Um, and then, yeah, Joe Fest was, we we arrived at the hotel like 11 o'clock at night on the Thursday night. We were exhausted. Like we'd left Rhode Island at 4 a.m. It was a really long ass drive down there. Yeah. We're yeah. exhausted. It took for some un, unknown reason, it took like almost 40 minutes for Bobby to actually check in and get the, the keys to the hotel rooms and stuff. And people are like walking up saying hello, like your channel. And I was like, Oh, it's going to be one of those weekends. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, Samuel, like Tony's just a genuine dude. Like I, I didn't say shit to you. You know what I mean? Like I was just like, you turned around and I was like, Hey Tony, like I, I told you I'd bring you this timber, you know, just like just totally playing. And you were like, Oh yeah, Chad, what's up? You know, we just yeah. chatted, like, totally cool. And um, Michael Demmer said, uh, it'd be an absolute honor to just shake your hand any way I can meet you when you are in Rhode Island before Valicon. Um, potentially, yeah, yeah. I um, I know I know the date I'm arriving in Rhode Island, but then I don't really... So I, I think I'm there for... I think I'm there for eight days, but we are talking about split doing the drive over two days rather than that long ass drive so like you know maybe driving two thirds of the way staying in a motel and then being able to get up thursday and have a nice you know, yeah uh, that's almost sort of, the whole coast yeah 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 um so, so and if so if that happens I'm, I'm only in Rhode Island for seven days but that seven days i don't really have an itinerary i'm just i'm there i'm helping bobby with with valiverse you know, helping him pack the trailer, helping him pack all the toys, signing some figures, all, all of that stuff. So, um, and I, I actually, I want to, I want to film some stuff with Bobby as well. 
like sit down and and interview him at his design desk and you know there might be there might be a, a history of Balaverse documentary uh, I want to work on kind of thing. So, I, you know, yeah. take advantage of the opportunity, right? So, Michael yeah. Demers, there you go. There's your answer uh, to be continued. So, very cool. Yeah, so certainly. If 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 I'm going to be like going out and about and doing something in Rhode Island, I may. I mean, this goes all against everything I learned in the SAS about security and avoiding routine and and all of yeah. that. But <laughs> yeah. Maybe it. Maybe I'll. Tell, I'll well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be in the toy aisle of this Walmart from set from four to four fifteen. If you want to come and say hello. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, George Aiken says that Cobra is the only organization that was prepared for COVID. Yeah, absolutely. And then oh, uh, I don't know about that. Those those cloud car pilots on Bespin had the right idea. You know, we've yeah. Set <laughs> yeah. Don't cough yeah. on me. And then Scott Hughes says the video I made of the first in-person meeting of Tony and Michael is one of the greatest highlights of the show. Uh, then we went straight into meetup and then iconic. Yeah. 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 It yeah. was awesome. Thank you, Scott. And I, and I, I, hope was... you're, uh, I hope you're on the mend. Scott had a bit of a, I don't know exactly what happened, but he had a bit of an accident on the weekend and he's been injured. So. Oh yeah. Hope you're feeling better. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why I wasn't, fully tracking the timeline for Iconicon last year but my wife and i flew it was it, you know, never fly to joe fest right because other stuff's going on and then uh you know every time i'd walk past a general i was like yeah i, I can't pick that general up because we freaking flew like I, i'm not going to ship it home because that's stupid yeah so yeah and then i don't know i was talking to melinda and i was like wait it's when it's like right the day after Joe Fest. I'm like, shit, I can't stay. I got to fly home. So um, I'm not making that mistake this year. I'm driving across the entire country. So. Oh, shit. How long is that going to yeah. take you? Uh, three days. Whoa. Yeah, it'll be two full days. And then on the third day, it'll be like five hours. Yep. Yep. It's it's a drive. But I, I do it from here to uh, Fort Benning, Georgia. So Fort Benning in Georgia is like home of the infantry for the U.S. Army. And every time I have to go to Benning, uh, because I'm, I'm what's called a master gunner for heavy weapons, I'll, I'll drive out and drive back. So I'm used to it, but I'm doing it alone this time. So whatever. I'll just uh, I'll listen to a bunch of YouTube and stuff. So it'll be cool. And then uh, I think this is for you. So uh, Wesley Hendricks says, love your costumes at Joe Fest. No, I think both of us. I don't, I don't know. I think I think he's talking about you and you and the ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say it's you and me and the ma'am. How about that? We'll we'll just say that. Well, there there, there <laughs> was a photo taken at one point because I think mm -hmm. so. So I so I only like wore the get up Friday and Saturday, and then on the Sunday I just opted to wear an Action Force T-shirt and a pair of shorts. Yeah. You know, because it was getting a bit smelly by that point. Um, but at mm -hmm. some point on the Saturday, I had been walking through the convention at some point and someone stopped me and asked me who I was dressed as. So I got back to the booth and, and, and I'm not, I'm not sort of picking on them. They, they were genuinely curious, you know, they, they didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. um, so I got back to the booth and, and we took a photo where I ripped off the side of a, of a cardboard shipping box and wrote on it in marker pen. This is not cosplay. <laughs> took a photo with it no yeah so. yeah that was very cool uh daredevil dave what's up man thanks for showing up uh i'm i'm sure i'm actually pretty far behind on this this chat so um uh you're welcome Lilith, for asking I, i'm sure one of us can hook you up but uh uh will matt damon join action force after he becomes such a disappointment in gi joe You know, I I I love the Born Identity films. Um, I watched this really cool video on YouTube yesterday about the making of the first film, and there's there's this new channel. I actually I started watching this channel when I was in the states last year. It's uh, it's called um, Shit Show, and it's all about troubled movie productions. Yeah, and I I downloaded a couple of their videos, and we were like listening to it on on the journey from Rhode Island down to Joe Fest. And Bobby was like, and I was like, yeah, these are really good videos. I can't understand why this channel has only got a thousand subs. They've just done a video, which is, you know, less than a year later about the first born identity movie. And I sat down and watched it yesterday and went, holy shit, 
I can remember talking to Bobby last year saying less than a thousand subs. They're now like a hundred and seventy-two thousand subscriber channel. <laughs> like, so they're doing something right. I watch a similar kind of series. It's on Joe Blow. It's what the fuck happened to this movie? Yeah, and yeah, I, I watched that I, too. Yeah, yeah, I watched this series on all that stuff. And then Lilith is asking, "Have you ever been to Lobo Collectibles in Melbourne?" Uh, I'm very familiar with the store. I've actually bought some stuff from there. From um, you know, they, they sometimes list stuff on on eBay, but I've never actually been myself. If I, I, I when my family came to Australia in 1988, we flew into Melbourne because uh, my dad had some cousins there, and we went and kind of spent some time with them. And we kind of went on like a six week. We we hired like a, what do you call them in America? Like an RV, and we yeah. travelled from Sydney uh, from Melbourne all the way up to Sydney um over about a six week period and then flew over to to perth which is where we were going to settle i've never been back to melbourne since 1988 so but but i'm very very aware of lobo collectibles it's a very well known uh vintage toy store here here in australia they've got some they had a flag for a long time a box flag um yeah i'm sure that's the money back then (laughs) and then uh Jeff uh, McElwee says, still want to share a beer or a soda, in my case, with Tony and Retro Blasting White Potato too. I guess. <laughs> yep. Very cool. Uh, James Salzberg wants to know, do you and Michael need more 30-06? Uh, Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah. The answer is always yes. If it's <laughs> ammunition, the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Impossible Pie, what's up? Tony, have you made a list of items you'll be on the hunt for at Valicon? Lists are always good. So me and Mrs. Analog Toys are are buying a house this year. So my budget's going to be like literally as soon as I get back from the States. We can't because I, I, I want to move back to Perth at the end of the year. And I'm going to be building a bigger studio collection room. You know, I'm, I'm really going to be investing a lot. You know, I, I envision when we buy this house, we're probably not going to move for 15 years. So I want to yeah. be really well set up for YouTube and all of that. So, you know, we, we, we've we got we've got a good chunk of money saved, you know, as a down payment on, on a house. But um, I don't want to spend too much. So I do have a bit of a list, but it's not as extensive as last year. It's silly things like... Um, the second issue, Storm Shadow, you know, when he joined the G.I. Joe team and he's got the... I've got a mint yeah. one of those figures. I've got the bow. I've got the claw. I've got the backpack. He's missing the sword. So I'm going to be walking around Joe Fest looking for the red sword for version Just digging. <laughs> Just digging Storm in Shadow, yeah. yeah. I, I would really like to get a, a nice version one Storm Shadow. Like, I've got, I've got a, the figure in my collection with all the accessories, but the figure's not great. It's faded. The paint's not great. So just a minty figure, and I'll put the accessories on, swapping from the one I've got. So you know what? I might be able to. We'll 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 pause what I'm gonna. So we just went to Southwest Toy Mania, and one of the guys who owns a shop that I shop at all the time, he has a minty minty, no yellowing on him whatsoever, hundred percent complete version one storm shadow he's not on a card i don't know if you want him carded but he's 100 percent complete nah, loose i want him loose okay let me let me reach out to him and see if he still has it so, okay because i actually filmed it in my video i picked him up and i showed how clean the storm shadow is no yellowing at all not even on the crotch you know how sometimes like they're just the crotch yellows yeah. perfect he's in perfect shape and then uh I'll check on that for you. And then World Made of Cardboard said my wife and I will be bringing our desert rats for you to sign and a bag of potatoes for Ryan. <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> blasting on Ryan. And I, I don't even know if Ryan's still here. He probably fell asleep. Um, I think um, R- Ryan, ha- I know he was in the chat earlier, but I know he, he had something on this weekend as well. I think he was doing something with the wife. So Yeah, I, I'm just um, boss. Broken Vader's up. They, they they make for really good chopsticks if you've got you know clumsy <laughs> hands like me, um, or the, you know the, you've got this pointing finger here, which is actually really good for cleaning the wax out of your ear. Um, mm. But there's there's Broken Vader's. You know there are some people 
who were genuinely upset with me that that these came back to Australia. Really? Yeah, and the, I get private messages from people asking if I'm going to return Vader's arms when I go back to the states this year. I'm like, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think I'll get them through U.S. Customs. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're registered as uh, deadly you know, weapons. As weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, and then Pendragon, were we talking about car rants? He said, "Oh, the car rants. He will rant." Am I that far behind? I hope I'm not. I really hope I'm not. Um, Michael says, so Tony, you possibly post where you will be hanging out in Rhode Island or your downtime. Um, I'm, I'm that, po- I'm that possibly. freaking far behind. Yeah. Poss- possibly. Um, yeah. Ooh. Cause I don't know where I'm going to be hanging out on my downtime. Like, I didn't have a lot of downtime last time. So yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that, again, to be continued. And then uh, Matthew Matson said, critical drinker has a series called production hell. Yeah, that, that's actually really good. It is. Um, oh, and then James says he has 15,000 rounds that he'll send Michael some. And now the ATF's going to come um, shut so, me down. Um, Thank you. When you pulled up James's last chat, it didn't, it went over my head. James sent ammunition to Michael for the M1 Garand that he let me fire. Yeah, the 30 out six. So, yeah. So, so if I had a weird reaction when that last comment came up, it's because. It didn't register in my head. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then uh, Wilhelm says, I had a wonderful time at Valicon slash Joe Fest, but the highlight was the Iconicon meetup. Yeah, rub that shit in. Meeting Tony, Michael, and everyone else was incredible. I can't wait for this year. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. So, again, this year I'm driving so I can freaking hang out. And uh, Broken Vader can never be fixed. He is too big of a celebrity as now. Yeah. 2316, how far behind are you? I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not behind shit, man. I'm all caught up. Anywho. <laughs> so um yeah, there's a there's a 2022 Valicon memory right there. That's you, me, and the yep. man. That was freaking awesome. Because we just walked up and you were like, Oh yeah, we're taking a picture. And I was like, Oh, cool. we're gonna we take are. a picture with Tony, yeah. That was yep. that was one of the highlights of my of my whole day right there. It's just because you were just like, yeah, let's just take a picture. And we said yeah, we all yeah, yelled it's it time for action. I had I took a, a lot of photos with a, with a lot of people. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of the photos were taken on other people's phones. Like I, I got back, and I had hardly any photos on my phone. So when I made my video about the trip. I was having to go onto all these other people's Facebook pages and download the photos. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, James Salzberg uh, says he has a bunch of five five six as well. Yeah, yeah. Save save that save that for uh, Action Force: The Divide. You know, <laughs> you may need that one day. Uh, and then Jeff asks, any thoughts on going to Farpoint Toys while you're in the Rhode Island area? I have no idea what that is. Is um, Farpoint is or? they sell all sorts. Uh, Farpoint's in New Jersey, isn't it, Jeff? I, I thought Farpoint was in Jersey, but it, it's a real well-known uh, uh, toy store, and um, they are on, I believe, season two of a toy store near you that um, Brian Volkweiss does. The guy who did um, the toys that made us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I've. I, I probably have seen that that uh, that story in that series. Then I don't know if I've watched every episode, but I've watched a few of them. Yeah, it's the one where they talk about how it caught fire and yeah. Oh yeah, like yeah. I, I, yeah, I do know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's far point. And then uh, will Broken Vader survive Kylie Minogue? No, no one can survive <laughs> Kylie Minogue. No. <laughs> and then yeah, Jeff says it's a legendary toy store, Big and Joe's, and other lines. Yeah, they're in Jersey. Yeah cool store anyway so uh yeah there's you me and the ma'am and uh, again that was one of my highlights so yeah cool and um we're gonna move on you wanna you wanna join me in this i kind of think it's about time yeah so uh george if you're still here we're gonna open this and um I'll, i'm gonna try to savor it but i'm gonna try to watch the chat at the same time and not totally bore people so here we go this is from george aiken the man himself hi chad george from glasgow here do you like stuff? Yes, I like stuff. I, I love that that's like my thing. Do you like stuff? 
Uh, I sent posts to complete some of the vehicles you have. Oh, also some British chocolate to enjoy. Yours, George P.S. Hope you like the boat. Let's see. Let's see. And then, uh, oh, George is still here. So he says he's still here. Um, Jeff says, for whatever reason, he thought it was in Rhode Island. No, it's in Jersey. Tony, can you share any insider info on Action Points figure? No, I cannot. <laughs> there you go. There's your answer. And then there George the is still here. There was the teaser video, and um, which I I edited that teaser video for for Bobby. But there's just that one image of a vest with some sunglasses hanging from the vest. Oh, look, Ryan's back. Glad you're back, Ryan. We missed you. We were all worried about you. Yeah, we were uh, running out of potatoes. Yeah, and then <laughs> Daredevil Dave, can't wait to meet you guys at Valcon. Yeah, absolutely, man. Can't wait to meet you too. Um, Drew wants me to go bigger. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to remove this. I'm not, I'm not going to take Tony off because it's it's freaking Tony. Like Tony's the reason why we're here. So. Uh, okay, cool. So we're going to open this box and uh... nice. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Have you eaten British chocolate before? Once uh, in Afghanistan. Yeah, you'll never eat Hershey's again. Look at all these figures he sent. Whoa. There's the man right there. Baron, the Black Mage. You got a Kraken in there? There's a Kraken and a freaking Mouton. Look at that Mouton. Nice. No way. I, uh, you know, I, I learned a thing or two from a guy who might be hanging out on my channel right now. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm fairly learned because I pay attention. Look at that. Look at that. George, that wow. character, that character design is batshit crazy. I know it's so freaking ridiculous, but I love it. They, they, they took a World War II deep sea diver and diver. turned it into a death robot. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Uh, Cutthroat, what does British chocolate like to eat? Rich. It it it, it has it has a lot more milk in it um, than what. Yeah. The, the chocolate you find in, in the state so got the, the baron. baron mouton got a kraken i love the kraken the kraken's ridiculous yep so ridiculous two of these bad boys the My red favorite. shadows i i am going to make a red shadows costume that and the headhunter stormtrooper from 93 gi joe those are the two costumes i'm going to work on yeah there's the major yep those are freaking awesome 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 look at this tony look at this you ready you know what that's for the turret for the atc that's it right there oh it's all in there it's all in there in the boat. That's cool, man. The yeah. boat's cool. And um, is it a boat or is it the roof for the Z Force Jeep? <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. And yes. Yep. Yes and yes. That's exactly. And then uh because mine was missing the lights on the front, he sent me a replacement for that. How nice. rad is that? I didn't know that mine was was missing a piece, and then I got it. Yeah, and then he sent, like, all the pieces, parts that come with it. So cool. So cool. It's so awesome to be able to complete a toy you, re you really like, so. You know, and, yeah, and and that's just, that's just George Aiken. Hey, look at it. Rad. There's that just a bunch is... of so that figure there, I have to go back and, and watch my video because I don't remember off the top of my head. Because he's got red pouches and not black pouches on his legs, that means he's the driver of the Jeep. He's not wheels. the Z4 infantryman. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's wheels, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah, then, yeah uh... because of the different colored pouches. Yeah, look at that. 
<laughs> I beat you to it, son. Yeah. And then uh, boop. there's the man. Yes, come on. Yep. And I have the, the modern version of him, which is cool. Oh, speaking of which, modern versions, Captain Skip. Yep. Yep. Rad. These are so awesome. Thank you, George. Thank you so much. Oh, here you go, Tony. The squad leader. Yeah, so rad. I because they they never put out a modern version. You know when when GI Joe when they kind of half assed the the action force stuff in the in the later figure subscription. They never made him, but they made like Gaucho and Jammer and a couple of the others. Yeah, so yeah. I actually um, I made a custom of him in a in a modern four inch figure. But he's so awesome. Thank you, George. Thank you so much, man. I can't. I can't thank you enough. Oh, uh, here you go. Boop. <laughs> the radio operator. Yeah, that, there is. That's the figure that Bobby sent to Stan Solo to base the design, like, you know, figure out the plastic. And that's why the like arms are, of, yeah. of the vintage desert are shaped that way. That's the figure he said. And I think also because the hat comes off. So it was like, you know, you're making a figure that's not wearing a hat or a helmet or whatever. So, right. Um, so that mold that was, is like the basis for that. That's the that base. Desert that's rat. that figure is the basis for the the vintage desert rat. Yeah, that is super cool, George. I I can't I can't thank you enough, sir. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get you back. I'm gonna send you some cool shit from the U.S. So very cool, very very cool. So uh, thank you all for uh, experiencing that with me. That the hats in the bag. Yeah, I, I actually see it down in there, and uh, so cool. Thank you so so much. Um. Tony, what do you think of the classified Big Ben? It's a good question. There's so many problems with it. I made a video about it when it was first revealed at the that UK convention, but then since then, more images have come out. You know, he's got a double-barreled assault rifle. Yeah. I don't know. And now he's supposed it, to be like a Night Force exclusive or some shit? His magazine pouch is on his back. Like, what? that's not where you carry ammunition. It's on your left. If you're right-handed, it's on your left hip. Um, Non-primary. I wanted that side. figure to be to be so good. Um, the, the machine pistol in the drop-leg holster with this enormous magazine sticking out, like, that's just going to get hooked on shit and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um... I, I am getting shitty. one though. La Laser Pants has Laser Pants has pre-ordered me one. Um, I do still want to get it because I probably want to make a video about how it's not terrible, but like it's clearly made by someone who did no research into the, the British Special Forces. <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. I'll jump in my car. You jump in your car. We'll jump on street Done. yard. Done. <laughs> And, um, you know, I actually, I threw the, the, uh, slideshow away, but, um, I forgot this one. What are your, uh, what are your thoughts on that? I know you got a few. And I mean, I yelled about him in a car and I freaking threw him. So I just figured I'd ask. Yeah. I mean, this is the face of, uh, what's it talk art talks about the Hasbro dick suckers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can get a lot of cock in that mouth. <laughs> I don't get that. It's it's so bad. It's so bad. In person, it's worse. Like when you hold it and just look. Oh God, I go, I can go nuts on this figure all day long. The camouflage it, sucks. The um the water bottle that's molded into the backpack from the images I saw looked like it was way too small. Mm -hmm. like scale scale wide like you know yeah yeah it, it's what, it's not a, a full u.s campaign. u.s army issue water bottles i don't know if they've changed now but they didn't change from, from vietnam they were still using them in you know in the early 2000s it's the same water bottles carry the same amount of water and they look way too small and yeah, yeah. we have a standard one quart canteen and then we have a two quart which is like a big rectangle but yeah it it's bad. I'm, I made a I made a comment about him like why the hell has he got gators? 
Yeah. And and I, and I made it, I don't know, I might have been on 3 POA or something like that. And someone in the chat was like, because it's like the original figure. It's like, no, the original figure had jungle boots, which are mm -hmm. canvas and leather boots. He yep. didn't have gaiters. Green on black. People haven't worn gaiters jungle boots. since the Second World War. Like, nope. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Matt Damon. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, I just I just wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. But uh... yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. And it's yeah. that that figure should have been a home run for him, you know? It should have. It really should have. But uh, you know, I mean, people are making him look better with Valver's heads. So Yeah. Yeah, apparently blowback looks pretty good on there. So Yep. Yeah, absolutely yeah. does. Yeah. And then uh why would you take a snake to the chest for this creep? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when somebody else pointed it out, like you could have taken the Duke head and done some stuff to it because they're brothers with the same mom, right? They're half brothers. You you could have done yeah. something to the Duke head to where they look kind of similar, but this face sculpt is shit. It's just dog shit. And then there it is right there. F them up. Yeah, I mean, you say, you say they're they're brothers with the same mum, but like this face looks like his mum and his dad are brother and sister as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like sloth from the Goonies. This yeah, dude is yeah. jacked up. He is terrible. So so bad. Anyway, um, yeah. So then I I put this together because I, I thought that looked kind of cool. So you know, yeah, come on out to Joe Fest and see uh, Valverse and uh, Tony from Animal Toys. And um, Michael and Melinda from Retro Blasting are going to be there. Um, yeah. Melinda didn't, didn't go last year, so she's going this year. Uh, Matt Swafford from Reclaimers Vintage Toys. You should know him from Iconicon. Um, Scuba. Articulated Ninja is going to be there. Yeah. It's going to be Scuba bigger, bigger will be there. better than last year. Yeah. Yep. Zazel will be there. Hans Chow will be there. Uh, Ken from Toy Connections will be there. Like, I, I just can't. You know, Adam from Go Figure, and on and on and on and on, like all the people that are going to be there. I I I I knew Zazel was going. I didn't know Ken was going. Um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, tons of people are going. Yeah, very very cool. So, um, you got any final thoughts? What else you got going on? Ah, uh, final thoughts. Um. Yes, there is going to be an Iconicon again this year. It's going to be a scaled down version of Iconicon. Um, so the first Iconicon was really successful, I think, because the world was in lockdown. Um, and we we noticed that that wasn't quite happening uh, last year. Um, so I think we're scaling it down to a three-day weekend. I think it's going to be... I don't think we've locked in the date yet, but it's going to be early July, I think. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, Patrick's going to be at Joe Fist too. Real cool. Big Bacon's going to be there. Awesome. Anyway, so I'm sorry. I, I busted up your flow. Final thoughts? Uh, f fun, final thoughts. Um, if you see me at the booth, come and say hello. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to purchase a desert rat figure like whatever. Just I just want to meet people, come chat to me. Um, although I I would recommend, you know, by all means say hello on the on on the Friday. But um, the best time to, you know, if you want to have a chat five or ten minutes, you know, whatever. Saturday and Sunday is the better opportunity to do that. Um, you 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 you'll see what we mean. Like if. I, I think it's going to be like three times busier than last year, given, you know, yep. the way that the way the community has gone crazy for like Warpath Eclipse and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, it's we're going to have a lot of people at that booth Friday night. You know, and the, the brand has grown. The line's grown. It's it's yeah, it's bigger, better. It's going to be crazier. And, um, you know, I actually start a, a question and I, I forgot to look at it. Michael Demers is asking, have you ever thrown a nine banger? What's a nine banger? I'm thinking it's a type of grenade, maybe a flash grenade. I don't oh, know. Like, um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure. I've I've definitely thrown flash. I've thrown a lot of flashbangs in my life. Um, but yeah. Michael, you're still Maybe here. What's a nine. what's a nine banger? I don't know. Yeah. I've thrown a lot of fragmentation grenades in my day. <laughs> so yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. Sure, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm flash pretty bang. sure the flashbangs I used to use had like had like six, six in the bottom, not not nine, but yeah. So yes, yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tony, I cannot thank you enough for hanging out with me. I, you know, everything that you do, like the history of Action Force, Action Man, what you do for the toy collecting community, the fact that you're just real, you know, you just call shit as you see it. I, I've always really respected and appreciated that. And I, I've thank tried you, to emulate, like, I say a lot of stuff that isn't popular now, but I, I definitely... Um, I, I kind of took some cues from you when it came to that. So I just I just call it as I see it and whatever it is, what it is. So I cannot I think, thank um, you enough. No, th thanks for having me on, Matt. It's been this has been an absolute blast. Um it's really nice for once to obviously I, I stream with Bobby and Ryan all the time, but for a long time when I had this channel, I would do these live streams with people that I've never actually met in person and we have met in person. So yep. um yeah, looking forward to meeting you again this year and uh yeah, this has been a really fun time. It's one of one of the sh one of the shows. I'm I'm actually looking forward to going back and rewatching this later on over a couple of beers or something. So awesome, very cool. And you know, before we go, um, how's Pallet Talk coming along? Didn't you have Drew on there? Wasn't he your last guest? Yeah, I had I had Drew on there. Like Pallet Talk, sort of just as and when they 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 come up i have no regular schedule with, with with those so it's just you know when i when i feel like oh I'm i want to sit down and, and and hang out with this person like i'm uh there's, there's been a few other channels that have been sort of trying to get me on um between now and um and joe fest that's going to be very very difficult like i said i'm going uh -huh. to thailand for 12 days then i come back <laughs> and i've got i've got like two major projects that i'm project manager for at work through late april or early may um and then the trip but um i'm not saying no to any of those channels i'm actually saying yes i'm just saying it's most likely going to be when i get back from the united states um so yeah because you and i had been talking about doing this for a while a, a little, yeah, little bit yeah yeah a little bit well yeah and then and then i said to you uh, yeah, I'll, we can do it on the 8th because there's no 3 POA and I got the dates mixed up and it was only, what, two, three days ago? I was like, Yeah, and you were like, man, Ah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was like, That's I, totally fine. Yeah, but then I messaged you and I was like, It's it's going to be on April 1st. And I was like, I hope he doesn't think that's a crappy April Fool's joke. <laughs> I didn't at all. It didn't even register to me. I was just like, Yeah, yeah. totally cool. Whatever you want to do. Like, we'll just, I'll just clear it all out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Tony, and everybody hanging out with us in the chat. Still got 67 people hanging around, and um, I thank you all for hanging out. I thank you for your questions, your input, the super chats, uh, you know, very, very humbling. I'm, I'm still new to that, right? So I'm still kind of getting used to that. And George Aiken, if you're still here, I cannot, cannot thank you enough, sir, for sharing your Action Force love with me. And um, thank you very much, Tony. I really appreciate it. Same. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Absolutely. Everybody have a good night.